Trace, what's happening, bud? What up, brother? Not a whole lot. Not a whole lot. Uh, big day. Big day. Election day, huh? That's what they say. Spaces, <laughs> spaces and live streams are murdering it right now. Um, crazy. Crazy. Whatever. Yeah, I'm, so, I'm looking forward to the move, man. I'm looking forward to... Uh, the uh, us going to YouTube and being off of Twitter. I don't hardly get on Twitter anymore. Uh, I start. I stopped using it whenever my little girl was born because I didn't want to be distracted. And now I just, other than the spaces, I don't. I'm never on this thing, anyways. Yeah, I feel like I'm not active in the groups like I should be. Um, I'm eager. I'm eager for the move. Were you able to see the demo video to at least some quality or some some ability? Yeah, like I said, the only the only audio problem that I seen was whenever it was uh whenever you were head on like the the, the full frontal shot, uh the side view from the camera the camera side view from from your desk that one the the audio was synced up the entire time you were talking. Yeah, it's just the one. It's just the one, but it's hard because the tech desk and the studio, even though they're only ten feet apart, are I can't really see one from the other close enough to know if my lips are sunk so like the problem comes in that the studio has three cameras in it the opening view camera which is a sky view it's just a 1080 camera then i got that courtside camera that's what i call it um that's the one that sync it's just naturally sync that's great then there's the nicer camera um and it has a lag in it so i either have to decelerate that camera or I have to resync the audio. But either way, I need someone telling me, like, okay, you're right now, you're you're wrong now. And then I can bring everybody else in on screens, on cameras. And I don't know if you watched that whole video, but I did figure out how to cross the audio. So as long as one of us is willing to host the space each week, uh, they'll run concurrent like the space will run they'll hear everything all the audio will be there but if we have any visuals or anything the space just won't see it but if anybody wants to comment or say something or get on a mic they'll be able to jump over on the space um request a mic raise their hand and then just speak live on the youtube channel so we'll see how that goes. We'll see if that can catch any traction or not. Um, my wife thought it was, when I explained to her, she thought it was good. My two buddies are both like, yeah, that's pretty clever. So um, I don't know. Hopefully it catches on. I'm pretty eager to move. Um, I don't know, man. I feel like a little bit of practice will be uh, pretty polished out there. I just need a little bit of fucking practice. Fair, fair. I don't know how all the framing and stuff look. Did you watch it on a phone? Uh, yeah. Yeah, it doesn't matter. You said part of it was cut off, so you couldn't see all the framing and everything. Anyway. No, no, I, I didn't. It wasn't cut off for me. That was Usman. I think was saying it was cut off. Oh, I got you. I got you. Um, yeah, I don't know if the white frames are too much on the small screen or not. I kind of went for a little bit of the comic book look, just because it's kind of easy for me to pull off. I can go back and refine this or refine that um over some weeks or some months to come but i you know i gotta put everything together so i just trying to do stuff that's i don't want to say generic but stuff that is fairly easy for me to do a bunch of edits on and a bunch of changes and create a whole bunch of stuff um just trying to do stuff that's pretty simple right now um pretty proud of the little studio it's not huge it's like 13 by 11 or something it's not a huge space man but uh you know then it's got the tech area and all the cameras except for one actually sit outside of the studio and then film in so you know i'd say our our whole footprint isn't huge but it's it's probably 13 by 20 feet or so so 
Not too bad. We got us a little area. Get you boys on camera or synced up to all the other bullshit programs we need. And uh, we'll be fucking cracking on YouTube. Um, man, so did you see the... I, I think we're waiting on... Ooze, we're waiting on a couple people. So did you see... Jake Paul talked to Stipe by chance? Uh, no. Nah. Gotcha. Stipe isn't closing the door. On, I mean, I don't feel like he's given hope either, but um, I don't feel like he's, he's closing the door on retiring, which is... Bro, he hasn't fought in 10 years. He is retired. Yeah, I mean, you could say the same... Kind of for John and Francis too, right? Nah, but he like he been out for a long ass time, dude. Like they've been they've been active since, right? I, I don't I don't think Stepe's fault since the other two's fault. Um, I you know I don't know when Stepe's last fight was, but I'm gonna find out right now. Well, wasn't didn't he? Yeah, wasn't wasn't that fight a fallout between Stepe and somebody else? And then he fought uh, gone. Wasn't that short notice, or was that was that a planned fight? I don't know. I don't know, to be honest. Um, trying to see because I think it was Francis. Actually, was the Francis KO his last fight? Yes, it was March twenty twenty one. So we are at fucking three and a half years. Uh, what is he what like? Is, 40, is he is he forty two? No, I don't think he's that old, bro. He's he's got to be up there. He's he's at least forty. Oh, he is forty two years old, bro. Damn. Like this dude is like he is like. What are you doing, man? Like you 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 lost out on so much money because you you wanted to fight John Jones or you wanted a big money fight, and you left so much money on the table because you you didn't fight nobody else. Yeah, I'll be honest. The way Stipe got knocked off, by, knocked out by Francis, um, and it's been three years, bro. This fight doesn't sell like it would have sold. I think that I agree with that, and I think that um, I think Stipe would have been one of those fighters that, fighters that just never retired verbally. I I think without John Jones, Stipe never fights again anyway. I don't. Uh, well, I don't I'm, think. I don't I'm, think he's the guy that's gonna go to fucking Twitter or go on a show to retire. I just don't think Steve pays that guy. I am one hundred percent taking John Jones KO prop in that fight. I feel like Joe Pillow Fist John Jones could probably knock out Steve Pay at this point. Um. Yeah, I don't. I I like the submission, man. Um. John. That's fair. I one hundred percent know the fight. There's no way that fight goes to a decision. Like John finishes that fight, it probably is a submission. I just like that KO would be like real, real juicy. Yeah. Um. I don't know, man. So I've been a John fan for so long that if I'm just being honest, um, I think it's submission or decision. Um, I think that John. I think that if Stipe is strong and not as slow as we think he will be, I mean, he's not going to be fast. I'm not going to use the word fast. Um, but I think if he's got any speed um, and John feels any strength from him, um, John knows how to negate that, and he doesn't have to hit you to do it. Um, he'll just slowly pick you apart. Which, you know, like, yeah, you're the GOAT, whatever. You know how I feel about John, but I am worried that it could be very boring. Um, to be honest, though, I think Stipe tries to force the pressure, and it causes the fight to end. I don't think Stipe waits. Just my guess. I think if it's up to John, um, he looks for the takedown, or it goes fucking five rounds. I don't know. When's the last time John knocked somebody out? Bro, it's been a long time. Yeah, I'm stepping away for a minute. 
That's cool. I see Usman over there on the mic. Uh, don't know if he's actually on the mic, though. Yo, uh, yeah, I'm a little busy right now. I got everybody in the family sick. I'm uh, Mr. Mom right now. But uh, if you had to ask me, I'm going uh, John Jones by decision. I just feel like everybody thinks uh, Stipe is washed. And, I mean, he's super fucking old, yes, and everything uh, isn't on his side age-wise. But, um, I mean, he's still good. Uh we saw him get knocked out by an extremely hard ass fucking hitter. Um, I, I'd like to think that this fight goes to decision. I can't really. Uh, yeah, I mean, I, I see the path for the. I I see John's training, so I see the path for the, the takedown, which leads to the submission. Um, yeah, I don't know. I just I think John's training too much, too much grappling, wrestling for it to go any other way for him. Uh, I think he submits him or Stipe clips him. Uh, I'm hard pressed to think Stipe will clip him, but I guess it could happen. Francis is like 108 as well, and he just KO'd somebody, so you know it could happen. I know Francis isn't as old as Stipe, but. Fuck, he's getting up there, too. Um, the generation is dying. Not dying, but retiring. The generation is definitely retiring. Uh, are you putting any action on Mike Tyson versus Jake Paul? Well, I got nothing from him. Um, I heard you say you're Mr. Bombing over there. I... Uh, if I'm being an honest guy, I got to think that uh, Jake Paul probably edges the decision out. I don't think I see a world where Jake Paul can knock Mike Tyson out. Um, and I'm really rooting for Mike to KO him early. Um, but I do think if Jake makes it out of the second round, his chances of winning by decision go up tremendously. Um, I know Mike's training. I know I know everything Mike's doing. I'm watching all his videos. I follow his channel. I follow his social medias. Um, I, I'm, I'm really, like, on top of the Mike Tyson end of this fight. Um, I just have a hard time believing that after six minutes, eh, nine minutes max, that he's not cooked at f fucking 92 years old. Um, I want to say he's got nine minutes strong in him, but the age just makes me feel like, man, maybe only six minutes strong. Um, I do think that Mike is going to try to fight him like Mike Tyson, like Iron Mike Tyson. Um Hey, I hope he does it. I hope, I hope more than any. You guys think I'm a fucking John Jones fan? I am a, I am three times the Mike Tyson fan than I am the John Jones fan. Um, it, easy, easy, three times multiple that I am uh, my fandom for Mike Tyson over John Jones. Um, but man, I think the window is small. But I think if he clips him. Um, if he could, if he could clip him and then clip him again, you know, with the follow up, I hope <laughs> that's all I can say is I hope Ozzy, I seen you grabbed the mic, got the hand up. Nice to talk to you, bud. Get after it. Yeah. Good day, Joe. How are you, mate? Um, there was some change, like some rule, weird rules, right? Is it two minute rounds for this fight? So I thought they minutes? said that I thought, I thought it got cleared for three minutes. Did it not? Okay. I thought it was going back and forth. The last I heard, it was three minutes. Is it not three minutes? I don't know. I heard two minutes a while ago, but that might have been for the first scheduled fight. But, I mean, if we're looking at three eight-minute rounds, um, that, that doesn't favor Mike. So I, I wouldn't be surprised if it's three-minute rounds. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, if he knocks out Jake Paul, Christmas has come early for everybody. So fingers crossed. Yeah, for sure. Uh, round... 
duration. Let's see here. Oh, it is two minutes. The bout was originally scheduled to go down. Yeah, I like that a lot better if it's two minute rounds. And if it's two minute rounds, I, I wouldn't be too surprised if it does go the distance. So, yeah, I'll probably hit a little bit on the draw if I can get a, a good number on that as well. But, um, yeah, fingers fingers crossed Mike can just clip him. But two minute rounds with some clinching, some warnings and holding and bullshit like that. I wouldn't be surprised if it goes over. Um, I would take the... Okay, so I really thought that I heard that that was three minute rounds. I've thought for a couple months that it was three minute rounds now. Damn. I don't know where I read that or why I thought that. Um, so I think Mike's got three to four good rounds in him. Um, the question really is what will Jake's defense and Prairie look like? Um, yeah, I think Jake will be big enough to hurt Mike if he if he could punch him and clip him clean. Um, I I don't know that he clips him clean. Um, I will say this: Mike asked for this. I remember when Mike said he would fight Jake Paul, that he would have to do it. That he would. I don't remember if he said save boxing or show face or however he said it. Uh, but Jake's catching a lot of shit for fighting this old man. Which he should, but this old man wanted this hurrah. And if you're a young, fairly young Jake Paul, and you got the chance to go on Netflix and fight Mike Tyson, and you pass that up, you're an idiot. He's like 100 years old, you know? Um, I don't know. Real I just think quick, Joe, was... I just want to ask you a, a quick question. Obviously, Jake Paul's doing all this stuff for – fame and celebrity and all that. Do you think if he comes out here and knocks out 60-year-old Mike Tyson, do you think that hurts his brand? Do he gets more hate than love, I guess I'm asking? No. So, yes, but no. So, I understand what you're saying, but it's the type of hate, the type of hate that is going to make him more famous. It's it's the type of hate that's not going to make people forget him. It's the type of hate that are going to make people tune in next time, hoping that he gets knocked out. Um, real combat sports. I hate you from fans type shit. Um, but bro, if Jake Paul gets flattened in one round by 60 year old Mike Tyson, what does that do for Jake Paul? What does that do? Like, I think he's not even considering that possible. In two minutes, man, that's a small window. I'm not saying, oh, my God, it's going to happen. But if we're just talking brand at risk here, um, this is a win-win for Mike Tyson. He's a uh, – if he doesn't pull it off, you're fucking 58 years old. Nobody expected you to. You did it. You're a warrior. We love you. You fucking went in there and fought him. You didn't care. You weren't afraid. Huge win for Mike Tyson. You knock him out cold, bro. You're it, it. It'll be as big as if he had knocked Buster Douglas out in a rematch or something. It'll be massive. Mike will be everywhere. Um, Jake Paul, like you're saying, it's kind of a lose lose. Other than the payday, the only real up for him is if he knocks Mike out fucking cold and people just despise him and want to tune in to see him get knocked out. That's my only take on that and what it's worth for him brand-wise. Brand uh, I don't know. You, what do you think it means for him if he gets knocked out by Mike early Aussie? Yeah, uh, I think he's... Boxing, whole boxing career shit is over with. Like, he can't <laughs> – what's he going to do then? Like, he can't fight any real boxers. We know he's going to have no chance. He's, he can only fight other celebrity guys. He's got to go probably go back to his bloody YouTube stunts. I think we'll hear him say something like, I tried to be great. <laughs> you always got to try to be great. This was – I thank Mike Tyson. I think, you know, like, I think he gives some fucking cheese ball speech. Um yeah, but I think he still has the ability to make a lot of money in boxing. 
even if even if Mike flatlines him, I think he still has the ability to make a good amount. Um, and I think this kind of is celebrity boxing, right? Sorry, mate. This is this is Netflix, right? So I'm assuming all purses are guaranteed because this is free for everyone who has Netflix, yeah? Yeah. Well, so yeah, I wonder how much he's getting, how much these guys are getting paid. Um, if he loses, he'll, he'll never get that again, that's for sure. I don't think he'll – I think it's a long time before he gets it again either way. They've got to be getting huge promises for this. Um, yeah, because his fans, his fans are computer savvy. His fans are the YouTube generation. They're not buying pay-per-views, but everyone's going to watch it on Netflix. Yeah, I agree. And Mike Tyson is the A-side. There's no way Mike Tyson's not the A-side. My mom and dad, 62, 63 years old. They're like, when's Mike fight? Netflix, right? Yeah, we put it in our phone. We got an alarm set. We know. We're not going to miss it. You know, like, Mike is going to draw every fan he still has alive in the United States. Mike will draw. I, I wholeheartedly believe he will draw. Everybody he drew in the past. Um, people fucking love Mike Tyson. Whatever. Uh, all right. We beat that stick uh, or beat that dog with a stick. Uh, Trace, Usman, are you guys back on these microphones? Or are you still out there preoccupied in the, um, I don't know, in the wide, wide world, I guess? I'm ready to rock, dude, whenever you are. All right. Uh, uh, we're still missing Mike. I don't know where Mike's at, but uh, I don't know if he's been ready to go yet. I'm going to be preoccupied. I'm going to jump in when I can, but I am going to leave right now just because I didn't hear anything Ozzy said. If I did, I would have. Uh, I would have jumped in. So don't leave here. All I do is remove you from a co-host. Then I remove you from speaker. Then I invite you to speak, and you accept that. And then I invite you to co-host, and you accept that. And your audio should be fixed, at least the past few uh, spaces. That is all it has taken to fix the audio difference. Ozzy, can you, uh, I don't know, pipe up so we can see if Usman could hear you? Yeah, what's up, Usman? Are you in the chat, mate? I see your boy Trump's minus 400 now. Nope. He uh, he dropped back down the listener out there. I don't know what he's doing. He's kind of nude. He says he's a speaker on mine. Says he was a speaker and then went back to listener on mine. He declined my co-host invite. He left. Forgive him. He's new to this, guys. He's never done a space before. He doesn't know how these work. He's on the boat, mate. Don't worry about it, but he's on the boat. <laughs> um, all right. So, Usman, are you there? Yeah. Yeah, and I heard Ozzy. I'm, I'm back. Don't call it a comeback. I've been here for years. All right. I'm going to leave you on speaker and not move you to co-host since you have a clear connection with everybody. We'll just leave it that way. All right. Um we're going to dig into the card here. I'm not doing my normal news segment, guys. Um, yeah, I've been working on the YouTube production pretty hard. I won't do a big speech about it. Um, I've got a bunch of hours into it. It's uh, it's more than a webcam pointed at me saying, hi, guys, it's Joe, and these are the other guys. Uh, it's a little bit of a show, so pretty proud of, of how far I've gotten it. I need another week or so, and... Uh, I think we'll be ready to go live. These guys are dragging their feet, but don't worry. I'll drag them along. I like them all a lot, so we'll get them all there pretty quick. Uh, all right. UFC fight night. Magni versus Prats or Prates. Um, that's what we're going to get into. Is this UFC Apex 100? Is this it? Yes, sir. Man, uh, you know what sucks is they're going to go to like 102 or 103 and then they we won't see fights there for quite a while or some shit like that, I guess. Uh, 
they should have just stopped it at 100, man. Figure it out. Should have been 100 shows, and, and we're done with the way we used to do that. The Apex is getting bigger, so I expect them to have a regular shows there, but we're kind of like a home stadium. You can go once a month and see an Apex card if you got the dough. So uh, I think 2,500 seats, maybe 5,000 seats, they're adding a bunch of seats to the Apex. All right, so first fight in the night. Um, not going to lie. Claudia Sagalia versus Melissa Mullins. I know who Melissa Mullins is. We seen her uh we seen her drop to Nora Cornell. If I yep, I had looked that up earlier and I remember the fight. Um we had seen her drop one. But um Claudia, if I'm saying that correct, I, I may be mispronouncing it a little bit due to accents or whatever, but it's Claudia, the way it looks to me. Uh, she's making a debut. I'm not very familiar with it. We got guys around here that I know are. Uh, Claudia is plus 196, minus 250. I'm Melissa Mullins. I'm going to pop up the round props here. Melissa is, or the over is minus 250. And under two and a half rounds, you can get about plus 200 for it. Uh, I'm not familiar with her, so I won't actually hit the over, even though I assume it is probably safe. Trace, tell me about this fight. Uh, I don't really want to, if I'm being honest with you. Uh, it's I'm, I'm just it's a low level women's MMA fight. Melissa Mullins has been in the UFC for a few fights now. Uh, you know she's not got the octagon jitters. She's not making a de her debut. Uh, just give me the over. Melissa Bullens by decision if you want to make a, a a selection on the fight. But, uh, yeah, if it's just a simple women's over for, for our parlays for our boy Usman. Usman, what do you got on this fight? Yeah, man, um, just like everybody else, don't really know much about this other chick. Uh, we look at those numbers. It tells us to hit the over. So I'll parlay it. But um, everybody's acting like Mullins is a uh, is a lock, and I just don't like that, man. Uh, everybody went and talked about that Indian girl sucking, and she was gonna get her ass whooped, and uh, she won. So uh, people were not giving this new girl uh, any shot. Let's just go with the over. You talking about Tamira or Ta what was her name? Is that who you're talking about? Uh, I can't remember her name off the top of my head, but I, I remember everybody all week on her debut was saying she's Indian, uh, she's a girl, and she sucks, and she has no chance. And then she went out there and won and made it look pretty easy. So uh, not trusting a uh, girl that we know nothing about. Yeah, I got no reason to uh, to doubt you there on that one. Uh, Ozzy, you got any take on this one, brother? Yeah, I, I like I like Mullins here. I haven't seen too much of the other girl. I've watched some highlights, but you know Mullins, you know she kind of got knee to the stomach and and TKO'd against Cornhole, but she got the what was that other chick was the Ronda Russian Ronda Rousey or whatever. Uh, she even got dropped by her in round one, but kind of survived and the takedown saved her in two and three. So I really don't mind her to get some uh, top control here. She really kind of likes to get her takedowns from the clinch, and she's pretty good at getting the clinch. She just runs and punches her way forward and gets to a clinch, and that's how she gets her takedowns, and she's probably going to be successful doing it. So, yeah, I like the over. I like Mullen's decision. Yeah, however, however you want to play it. Very nice. Very nice. Um, again, I'm not on, so I got no debates here. Uh, Zabats, i seen you grab a mic. Uh, just shout out to you. I don't know if you want to get on this fight or not. Uh, but just thought I'd say shout out to you if you whether you're doing that, but how you doing today? Chill, I'm doing good. Just got out of work. Um, I don't think I have anything on this fight, but I appreciate the shout out. Shout out capmma.com. Hope you guys are doing well too. Not bad, not bad. I don't care who for, but did you get out and vote? Hell no, but I hope Trump wins. <laughs> uh, fair enough. Fair enough. Um, you know, I'm on one side. We're not going to talk politics, but uh, I, I'm, a, I'm a true true person, man. You got to get out there and just just vote whether uh, whether you feel like it or not. Uh, either way, I'm not going to harp on that. Next fight of the night. Sorry, Joe. Can, Go ahead. Can I just ask a quick question? Um, yeah. 
here, here in Australia, we have to vote. It's mandatory. Uh, you get fined if you don't vote. But what percentage of your country actually votes? Do you know? Like, is it a massive percentage or is it, like, minimal? Less than half. Less than half. Okay, well. Yeah. All right. Yeah. Well, that's, that's total population, right? So, I mean, there are a lot of uh, minors. Um, but we have about 400 million, and I think it was – I don't remember the numbers, but I think it was – 85 million on each side ish last time 80 85 million and those were record turnout numbers so you know population 400 low our low numbers are like 360 million our high numbers are like 400 million um weird that it reports differently but it you will find those numbers in there uh but either way you're not you're not at half you get what I mean? I wish we lived in a place where you had to vote. Um, I'm a person who thinks that all TV, I've thought this for years, all TV should be turned to the president once a week. He should have to speak to us for two hours or she, they should have to speak to us for two hours um, so that everybody's informed. And I think we should all have to vote. Um, yeah. I also think that uh, pre-election there should be a, a, a small quiz to make sure you know what you're talking about but i'm an ass and i'm a prick so i'm gonna move on to the fights uh i didn't know you guys are required though you get fined huh yeah yeah we get a fine if we if we don't vote so our name's got to be ticked off you know like yours are, i'm assuming and then we have to vote and if we don't uh we have to have a valid excuse why you could be hospitalized or something like that which will get you out of the fine um but other than that yeah if you don't if you don't uh, vote, you're going to get the fine. And they're pretty reasonable about it. Like it's like if you know, they're pretty reasonable about about if you can't make it or something. If you're in the hospital or sick or whatever. Yeah, yeah. If you can, you can't just say, "Oh, my kid was sick." You know, they're going to give you a fine. So. Gotcha. Yeah, it's it's a lot easier just to fucking do it. Go out, get a sauce. We, you know, there's always a barbecue where we're voting, and you should go out, have a barbecue, and get your vote in and fuck off in and out pretty quick. Yeah, fair enough. I uh, I don't know. I was raised by people who vote, 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 vote. So I do my thing and uh, whatever. I wear it on my sleeve. Some people like it. Some people don't. I don't give a shit. Um, anyway, I'm going to jump back into the car. Treshawn Gore and Tony Tricoli. Um, Tricoli's coming off loss. Trey Sean Gore's coming off of a win after two losses. Um, he be I, I always like to just say it because it's I say from some people say for me it's for my. I think uh, I like the names that everybody pronounces different because then you guys uh, can't give me too much shit about it. So just throw his name out there to do it. Uh, odds on this fight: Tricoli is sitting at. Plus 155, minus 192 for Treshawn Gore. The over is two and a half. You're getting plus 110 if you take it, minus 140 if you fade the over. Um, I don't know. I'll, if I'm being 100% honest, I don't think I could take Treshawn Gore at minus 192 over anybody. Um, and that's not like a huge insult to him, like being nasty. I just... I need consistency for my money. I can't have someone go out there and have a nice performance or get a W or whatever the situation may be. And it's one. And I'm supposed to be like, oh, yep, they're back locked. Um, I've seen people look great for one fight a whole lot of times. Um, when the under is plus money, uh, it tells you a lot, especially when you're looking at guys with low level records. Say it that way. Uh this fight is probably a pass for me, even in the parlays. But Trace, tell me what to play here. Yeah, man, I'm kind of on the dog here. I think uh, Jacoli's got a huge size and reach advantage, man. And uh, coming off of off of tough, I thought that Trace Sean you know, he he made it to the finale and then got hurt. I'm pretty sure he got hurt, and then he didn't fight in the finale. I'm pretty sure it was him that didn't fight in the finale because he got hurt. Uh, but ended up fighting uh, later on and losing losing to Brian Battle anyways. But, uh, yeah, man, he's he's not the fighter I thought he was. Seems to have a suspect chin uh, fighting out of Alaska, I believe it is. Uh, I'm not high on Alaskan fighters hardly ever. Uh, it just, they don't, they just, <laughs> 
MMA in Alaska, if you haven't seen some of the people that have come from there, is is extremely low level. Uh, outside of Euro Schmetta, seems to be seems to do pretty well. But um, and uh, Lauren Murphy and Lauren Murphy. Uh, yeah. Lauren Murphy. Uh, uh, yeah. Well, yeah. <laughs> but <laughs> <laughs> so, anyways, point is, like, he doesn't have he's he's size disadvantage. Um, uh, uh, experience disadvantage. Man, I just feel like he's he's going to go in there. He's going to try to strike big and try to you know bang it out. And I get it, Chicoli's mostly a submission guy, but that's a big ass dude, and he could definitely walk into something. And Trayshawn and Gore's kind of shown a questionable chin in the past. Uh, yeah, man, I think I think I'm gonna take a shot here on the dog. And I I, I forget. I would like to know who said it so I could give him credit because I did see it on Twitter. This is not my, me saying this. People were boat racing to go bet. Tricoli at plus four hundred against uh, um, not Zabit, um, the guy with the blind eye. Uh, what's his name? Shara Bullet. Shara Bullet. Yeah, people are, are boat racing to play him at four hundred against Shara Bullet, but are not playing him at dog odds against a a lot more viable of opponent that he can get a win over. Like, dude, that's that's just crazy. So yeah, I'll, I'll take a dog shot here, and I do have him in a. Uh, uh, in the one DraftKings lineup that I do have going right now, uh, I think he's he's going to surprise a few people. Whether it's a knockout or if he's able to get the fight to the ground and get the submission, I do think he probably gets the finish in this fight. Very nice. Um, probably not going to tell you, but that's it's probably good odds. Um, are you going to actually bet the submission prop on it? Uh, I might just play inside the distance on if if it's if it's plus four hundred or better, man. I might I just take that and not try to pick and choose. Just take the uh, take the value on it. Uh, but yeah, I, I'm definitely playing him inside the distance in some in some way. Very nice, Usman. You playing this one? Man, this is one where I don't want to. There's a couple of these fights. Is he robotic for anybody else or just me? Yeah, he's he's chopping up a little bit. God damn it. You're good now, bro. You're good now. Good, good. All right. There you go, buddy. Um, yeah, I don't know. Connect onto Wi Fi, get off of Wi Fi, whatever. Um, but yeah, this is just one of those that I just don't really have an urge to bet. I'm with Trace and thinking that Tricoli has a shot here. If I had to pick somebody, I'd like to go with Tricoli. Uh, but, I mean, as for the whole Alaskan thing, Treshawn Gore has spent his last year with Sean O'Malley's camp, so you know he's on the Austrian. But, uh, yeah, uh, fuck this fight. I don't have an over for you. I don't have a side for you. Just don't, don't touch this one. My degenerate ass isn't touching it. You shouldn't either. Well, let's see anybody else in here got plays on it. Ozzy, you doing anything with it? Yeah, um, I, I think Treshawn Gore is a better fighter. I mean, I, I, there's no doubt in my mind, but the guy just never fights. I think he's had six fights in six years or something crazy. Um, you know, he's had a few injuries. He's been having to have surgeries. You know, he's not just not fighting because he's rich. You know, he, he's uh, he's had to come through a lot, a lot of injuries and stuff, so... Yeah, if he was consistently fighting, um, I would have no problem having a bet on him here because I really don't rate Tricoli at all. Um, yeah, uh, I think Mackenzie Dern's ass is his ceiling, and I don't think he's ever going to accomplish anything greater than that. So, yeah, I think he's probably a couple of losses away from uh, getting cut, and I think the next loss is this weekend. Well, then. Um yeah, I got no argument for that. I got no argument for that. This is Mackenzie uh, Dern's baby daddy. Ah, oh, did Mackenzie Dern's baby daddy just go to jail? I'm just confused as what as uh, as to Ozzy's ass comment. Then no, Chakoli was just arrested for beating Mackenzie Dern's baby daddy's ass. Oh, oh. that's right. That's right. That's right. I think it was only like a month ago or something. Like it was within his training camp. Oh yeah, for sure, at the kid exchange, right? Yeah, something like that. 
McDonald's car park or something. Yeah, yeah, for real. I think that's how it went down. Um, well, you guys think that fight's bad to bet on. Um, <laughs> up next, Cody Stamen, Devon Blackshear. Um, man, you know what sucks about having to be or being a guy who likes to bet fights with a fight like this? Um, I like Cody Stamen. I've actually met Cody Stamen and not at a meet and greet. I met Cody Stamen standing in a line. Um, man, he's such a nice guy. Like he, he's a sincerely super nice guy. Um, he's plus two twenty four. Demon Blackshear minus two ninety four. Um, the over plus two or the over two and a half minus one twenty five. Oh, I'm sorry. Minus 360. Wrong line there, guys. Sorry. Minus 360. I knew to double check because that sounded wrong. The under plus 285. Um, this is another situation. The line is probably right if Demond Blackshear shows up and Cody Stamen shows up. I don't know a better way to say it. Cody Stamen isn't the... Uh, the grandest of fighters. So like, I guess, I guess all I'm trying to say is even if Cody Stamen shows up, if Demond Blackshear shows up, the line is probably correct. But Demond is not really any more consistent than Cody since he's gotten the UFC. Um, yeah, I don't know. Hard one to bet. I do like the over, but probably the over 1.5 because I could see Devon finding a submission uh, late in round two or early round three. Um, but I like the over for a parlay piece. First one of the night where I'll decide how I'm going to play it, but I'm definitely going to put this one in a parlay. Trace, what are you doing here? Yeah, man, we got a, a fight between two wrestlers. Um I'm gonna take the one that's the bigger guy, the 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 bigger size advantage. Honestly, the uh, Black Shears height and <clears throat> reach advantage. Plus, he's the probably the more dominant wrestler of the two with the bigger power in the hands. The more eight uh, inches of reach, bro. The more, eight fucking inches. And the more complete ground, uh, round, well-rounded game with with the submissions and the uh, the danger. He's he's dangerous everywhere. Is what I'm getting at. Um, so yeah, man. I, we know Black she can come out there and push a pace. I think he's able to come forward. Basically, whoever comes forward is going to win this fight. Who's ever able to get their wrestling going and win the exchanges, which I just feel like Black Shear is just going to be able to be the more explosive fighter. Like I said, with the more, uh, just the more physical, more, just a more of a specimen, honestly. So yeah, uh, give me Black Shear. I think it's probably going to be a, if it, it's probably a decision for Black Shear. Maybe a late stoppage. Uh, one thing I will give give uh, Cody is that he, he is tough. Uh, Stamens is tough, but uh, yeah, I think he gets overwhelmed in this fight. We see a a dominant uh, decision out of a uh, out of Blackshear. Let's kick it out to Ozzy because I know I know he's got a take on the other side. Yeah, I definitely do. Um, that that plus two forty. I mean. I think this fight goes the distance, and, and if it does, there's a ton of value in that plus 240. Um, yeah, I already bet him. I bet him as soon as i seen how crazy the odds were. Uh, I wish I, I wanted to put more money on it, but I got absolutely cooked the last two weeks in a row, so I've had to back off a little bit. But, I mean, I would have liked to have more money on it, to be honest. I think it goes the distance. I think he can get top control. Um, it's just about whether or not he gets finished. I think well, most of the inside the distance equity is on Blackshear. But if Blackshear doesn't get a finish, um, yeah, I really like that, that plus 240. And when the split decision drops, I'll probably play a bit of that and definitely some Cody split. I mean, I think that's how he wins. Um, I think it's probably going to be close if he doesn't get finished. He's probably going to get some top control. If not, he's probably going to be able to hold Blackshear against the fence. I know Blackshear's a bit bigger and longer, but I think there's definite strength advantage to um, – uh, his opponent here, so yeah, fingers fingers crossed he can get it done. But yeah, that plus two forty, I think that is, that it's just mispriced. In, in a day where all these fights are going the distance, um, yeah, I'll, I'll take that plus two forty all day. And I think if he loses, um, he's probably one of the best wins on Black Shears' 
resume, really. I mean, he hasn't really beaten any great fighters. So not that statement is that, but you know, you, you, can, you know what I'm saying. Like, I don't think either guy should be a massive favorite here. Um, Look, man, you can never... Sorry. You can never fade a guy with a barbed wire tattoo. <laughs> I know plenty, plenty of uh, women in Australia that I wouldn't fade with uh, barbed wire tattoos either. So maybe you're onto something there. Yeah. The other thing is, I don't know that Cody would be. Is Cody really one of his like his best win? Like at one point, Cody, Cody was thought to be a prospect. Man, he shot up into the rankings pretty quickly, and then he just kind of. I forget who it was. It was it was, it, was, it, was, it, was it, after Wyland or was it before Wyland that the, the he started to fall, the uh, the descent, bro. So at best, at best, his run was to like um, like uh, Perez. He fought. Uh, let me. I'm clicking it right now. So he hit the UFC in 2017. Win, win, win. And then it was loss, win, draw, win, loss, 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 win, win, loss, loss. And here we are. Um, Cody has struggled. Cody has struggled in the UFC for f over four years now. Um, if we look at just his last four years of fights, he is two and five. I I know Demond hasn't beat like the greatest of competition, um, but he remembers I mean, what it's Jose, like to win. <laughs> yeah, and Jose Johnson probably isn't much of like Jose Johnson and, and Cody. Cody is probably a very competitive fight. You get what I'm trying to say there? It's like, I'm not, I'm trying to say like, I don't think it's a huge step up, but I'm not trying to say like Cody is a, is a fucking walk for him either. I just, I feel like this is probably on par for the competition that Demond has fought thus far in the UFC. Just my thought. Um, whatever. Usman, are you betting this fight fucker? So, uh, the strat is uh, going to say to go over. Um, I'm going to be fighting every fiber in my body not to hit the under and just hope uh, DeMond Blackstreet gets a submission. I, I like you. I like Cody Stamen. I've never met the guy, but he just seems like a real cool guy. Um, he's, he's, a, he's a fun dog of a fighter, uh, and he's been around for quite a while. I feel like this is starting the trend that we'll see all throughout this card. Uh, this is the the night of Gerald Mearshart the uh, third, not because he's going to win or because he's fighting, but because all of his sons are fighting. This is uh, Matt Semmelsberger. He's a GM three. Cody Stamen. He's a GM three. GM three. He's a GM three. Um, Demond Blackshear just isn't that guy that they want to give the push to. You know. Uh, I, this is another one where I just don't want to bet it at all, but I'll probably touch the under just for fun. Um, I don't think you're crazy if you take the under two and a half. Um, I don't think you're nuts for that. And here, I, I know you're a Texas boy, so I know this will make you like Cody. When I met him, he's in a he's in a suit with a fucking cowboy hat on. His, I think it's his wife. She was real dressed up. She looked plenty fine. Um Cody Cody Stamen seems like respectable, honorable yeah. Brian Carraway. He's standing there legit, like arm around her waistline, being a gentleman, talking to her. We walk up, and my buddy goes, hey, is that a fighter? My buddy's not like we are, but he watches. He goes, hey, dude, is that a fighter? I'm like, yeah, that's Cody Stamen. And he's like, uh, I fucking knew it. And I'm like, yeah. So I wait for Cody to kind of turn his head, and he sees me, and I'm like, you're Cody Stamen, huh? Bro, he cracks a smile, lifts his cowboy hat up a little bit. And, bro, like, he was someone, like, he was happy to meet me. He was like, yeah. And he just led into a conversation. Bro, he stood there for probably five. He stood there long enough that the beer line in front of him cleared. And, I, and his wife was like, babe, we got to go. We got to go. So Cody's a good old boy. And, uh. 
fuck it. I hope he gets the W, but I'm not I'm not betting that Cody is gonna get the W. I'm I'm not doing that. No way. Um but yeah, I definitely think anybody from Texas is a Cody Stamen fan if they meet him. Um all right. Anyways, next fight up is What's Mike got? Oh, What's shit. Mike I got? forgot Mike hopped in. I put him on the mic and everything. Mike, nice to see you. How you doing today, guy? Hey, I'm doing good. My bad, man. I, for some reason, when I heard uh, nine, I was thinking my time. <laughs> did you bet on the election, bro? I don't care who you voted for. Did you bet on the election? I told you I wasn't voting. I'm betting. I bet on Kamala. I got a homeboy that studies this shit. He said Kamala should win. So I, I just went with it. All right, bro. Well, we're going to see. I'm trying to catch that fade, but uh, we'll find <laughs> out. We'll find out. What you got on the Cody Stamen fight, bro? Uh, I got I got Blackshear. Like, uh, Blackshear has always been inside to me. Like, it's only when he fights, like, the top-level competitions where, where you, you really got to go against them. But anyone less than that, DeMond, DeMond Blackshear is the side to pick. He He's really accurate with his shots. He has incredible punching power. Really good defense, man. His striking defense and his wrestling defense are on part. I don't think Cody Stamen is going to win any part of this fight. So, Black Shears decide for me 100%. Nice. Um, I'm not mad at it. If uh, if you do really got a bet on Kamala, bro, you should be going to uh, calshi.com slash election. C-K-A-L-S-H-I dot com slash election you can even punch it in while we're doing the space here uh they were the most accurate forecaster due to betting odds in 2020 i believe i believe it was them uh yeah they're they, like they give you odds on every race every state um yeah it's not odds the way we see it it's like the bet a dollar for 39 cents type thing but it shows you it shows you live betting um i think you can even bet through them it's fucking crazy um there's people that are you know we're degenerates for mma there are people that are true degenerates when it comes to fucking electorials man it's i didn't know until i knew there are people that get down betting on fucking elections man uh Crazy shit to me. Crazy shit to me. It's wild like, that you, you can even bet on it. What's that? I, said, I think it's wild that you can even bet on it. Yeah. Uh, so I think Kelshi is the site where you can bet on like, because it, it, it's different places. So it's like Kelshi slash election. I think there's a directory somewhere. I'm pretty sure you can bet on like fucking anything on Kelshi. Anything. I think that's the one. Um, I know there's one of them out there, bro. They have odds on, like, they have bets on, I don't know, literally the time that the sun sets in New York and shit, but it's almost that bad. They have odds on so much shit, it is undescribable. Um, I recommend a guy like you not to spend too much time over there. <laughs> <laughs> You'll be fucking around telling us who's winning elections everywhere. He'll be like, yeah, yeah, we can cap MMA on Tuesdays. We'll have Mike capping uh, politics on Wednesdays out here. Uh, nah, that would be my homeboy that does that. Oh, where, <laughs> where was this when I was trying to fade my sister's collegiate softball team? Hey, you can currently Come get on. Kamala Harris at plus 1,000. Yes, you can. Are you serious? Yeah, I'm, Poly, mm -hmm. I'm looking at one on called Poly Market. She's plus one thousand. Ten dollars. So Poly Market is ten dollars to get top. you a hundred. So Poly Market was the top metrics place or whatever they're classified as, and then uh, that Cal sheet. Those were like the top two, if I recall, uh, a couple of years ago, four years ago. So Cal she, uh right now for betting percentages. This isn't. I don't believe this has anything to do with other than what they update for voting uh, for, you know, what they've seen. I don't know how they update it, but they have him at 83% right now forecast. So whatever. 
She's she's cooked. Let's go. Well, if you're betting on it, like you know, that's when this is when. If you're actually betting that she's gonna pull it out in the end, fuck my side or whatever. This is when you get your money on it, but I don't recommend against it because those places probably lose less than the sports books. That would be my assumption. Then people probably lose less than the sports books. No fuck around with them. They uh them dudes getting real money. All right, so what's up next here? I got sidetracked. Um all right, next fight on the card is, so, wait a minute, is Dolby's opponent rescheduled? I don't know. He's fought in Zaleski, right? Yeah, it's that, Zaleski. The fight got canceled or postponed. Yeah, Zaleski's but he's involved. listed against Zachary Scroggins right now. Yeah, I was going to say Dalby's out. Scroggins jumps in uh, today. Okay, so that is legit. Scroggins is is in. That's what I wanted to know. I don't have any lines on him. Cap MMA. Um, while our live, while our I, odds are live, when they load, um, it won't load new lines except for like once every hour or once every 90 minutes is when it'll load in new stuff so it may just not have picked it up yet so i do not have eyes on lines on it but um zaleski wait it's eli zaleski dos santos right versus zachary scroggins um scroggins making his ufc debut this is how he's getting his entry huh you know, ZDS might be up there in age but he ain't no he ain't no easy out man like this this kid's gonna get his ass beat I didn't mean easy out. I I meant like uh, easy in. Like that's kind of a way to get in the UFC, bro. Get in and get beat up. Oh yeah, get a three yeah. fight deal to get beat up. Tried and I true. That's that's how I meant it. That's hundred percent how I meant it. Like this is an easy in for him. Like uh, I said, easy out, but easy in. He gets beat up, right? And then he's in the UFC. Where's he? From? Yeah, that's what I was gonna say though. Isn't this dude actually a champion in like Cage Warriors or some shit right now? It's FAC. Yeah, I knew it. So he just... Man, I just seen this dude fight not that long ago, and I seen his manager trying to get him a short notice fight with someone else like two weeks ago. So I'm not surprised at this one at all. Have any of you guys had time to break this one down, Mike? I'm just finding out about this right now. Trace? Uh, yeah, I didn't know if I got uh, rescheduled or uh, he got a new opponent. Man, um, well, I guess we're going to leave that Who's at that. Been? He is, I was trying to see if he's the current champion, but you said AFC? FAC, and yeah, it looks like he just fought in May for the vacant welterweight title. But uh, if you just look at his opponent's records, it leaves a lot to be desired. No, like the records are not that spectacular at all. So this kind of tells me that this could be a win for uh, ZDS. Yeah, bro, you take your dub, take your L, get your UFC contract. Um, I don't know. I'd probably look him up and watch some tape. I know he would. I know sincerely he was getting a little bit of a push just a couple weeks ago or a couple months ago. Um, hundred percent he was getting a little bit of a push mostly by his manager probably um and promoters but i know he was getting a bit of a push so it shouldn't be hard to find at least a couple fights on him uh before time to bet i think though i don't see any hands up this one just came up nobody hopped in like yo i know what's up so i think we'll just move on to the next one everybody cool with that yeah yeah sweet so gaston uh Bolins versus oh man y'all really gonna do this shit to me right now Ramos well that that's just how we gotta do it man I'm not butchering that man's name Cantavius Cantavius come on somebody give it to Cortavius me. Ramos see bro I knew I knew someone had that shit in here um all right odds on this fight 
Wait, 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 wait. No, Trace is not getting that credit. Did he say Ramos like this guy's a Mexican? <laughs> I, I'm not going to say I know how to say it, but I know damn well it ain't Ramos. I don't, yeah, know, I don't, I don't even know. That I don't even know if his last name is. I'm trying. I'm still trying to pull a damn card up. Oh, yeah, well, that was pretty good for uh, for the first name there. Anyways, uh, there's an I in there, bro. <laughs> <laughs> Bolanos is plus one fit fit one sixty four. Uh, I'm going. Yeah. Oh, Cortavius Ramius. That's not that's not a hard name. Ramius. There we go. Minus one ninety eight. Uh, you can tell I don't know shit about this fight. Over two point five minus or plus one sixty five. The unders getting you minus two oh five. Uh, man, they're hot on him to finish. Um. Odds don't really seem to reflect that, though. Mike, you do any tape on this fight? Uh, yeah, it's kind of clear that Cortavius should be the favorite. Um, Bolaños is really since I've watched him in MMA recently, he seems really limited. Just um, his right kick and his straight right hand are his main weapons, and um, he doesn't really set up his kicks, and he really doesn't have great head movement. Neither does Cortavius, but the dude is a powerful striker. He really does go for it, and he will have the grappling advantage. So he should be the favorite, um, but I honestly would not bet this fight. Not going to beat a, a dead horse, but I'm pretty much on the same page as Mike as well. What about the under, though? What about the under in a parlay right here? Uh, it's probably it, fair. I mean, I wasn't big on Bolanos coming from Bellator. Like, he, he was mostly known for the uh, spinning back elbow that went kind of viral, or was they did go viral, rather. Uh, but other than that, like, he limited success in Bellator. He came over to the UFC. He had a good win against somebody. I forget who it was, but uh, lost in his last fight by submission or knockout. But, uh, yeah, he just... Very one-dimensional fighter, and I think he's going to get all he can get from this little short, stocky little monster in uh, Cortavius Romanus. Uh, contender Series guy should look good. Man, uh, very nice. Uh, very nice. Um, all right, I had a crash over here, man. Uh, I'm, Ozzy, I'm, I'm back. What do you got on this fight? Yeah, man, I, I like this Contineras, whatever his name is, bloke too. He, but he's only what five foot four. I mean, this dude's a little dude. Little center bloke. Um, he's going to have a, a reach advantage every fight he's in. Um, yeah, he, if if he doesn't go for takedowns here, if he's a bit too confident in his hands, he he might get slept in this fight. I'm I'm assuming he's smart enough to go out there and make this a, a grappling match as much as possible. So yeah, I'll I'll keep an eye out on his um submission prop. Hopefully, it's a good number, but. I mean, you look at his submissions, a ton of them are arm bars, man. And, uh, you know, he came kind of close in his last fight or the fight before that. I can't remember. Um, the one where he didn't get the really quick knockout. But he, he was throwing up arm bars, triangles. You know, he'll try to take the back. So he does go for other submissions as well. It's just a bit surprising that so many wins are by arm bar in the men's division. Um, but, yeah, I'll, I'll attack a little bit of his sub because um, this bloke he's fighting, he... Uh, He's been put in bad positions before. Like his last fight, he got taken down a bit. He got his back taken. Um, if that happens in this fight, he's probably going to be he's probably going to get submitted. So, yeah, hopefully the submission prop is a good line. Other than that, I, I don't mind chucking this guy in a parlay. To be honest, I think he's going to come out. He's going to fight smart. He's going to do what he has to do. No more contender series. Just throwing hands. Like it's time to start getting paid and getting wins. So, fingers crossed, he does what he should do. Very nice, bud. Very nice. Uh, Usman, got any plays? Uh, I will probably touch Bolanos a little bit um, just because of the line, man. I didn't, no real breakdown. Uh, I haven't been too excited about Cortavius from what I did see on Dana White Contender Series. Uh, I didn't like Bolanos coming from Bellator. Uh, I didn't know why the UFC signed him, but I guess they know something uh, that uh, I don't know. They brought him over for a reason uh, at these odds. Let me just get a little bit on the dog. Very nice. 
Man, it was getting loud over there. Uh, you said you're putting a little bit on the dog on this one. Is that what I heard? Yeah, I think his background noise got the best of him. Um, well, I know that anyways, the dog was barking I, in the background. That's a sign. Yeah, it was. Yeah, it was. <laughs> you fucking degenerate. Uh, she don't want to come in. Get your ass in the house. What are you doing? Uh, all right, so up next is Carolina. I used to be able to say Kovalkiewicz. Kovalkiewicz. Uh, oh, thanks, Trace. Thanks for jumping in, bud. Right, steal my fucking shine right before I finally get a hard one right. I appreciate you, bud. Um, all right, so go Denise Gomes, minus 500. Uh, Carolina plus 359, the under or the over two and a half minus 300, the under two and a half plus 240, um, 33 books, five days, capmma.com. Uh, so I'll be honest, I actually like the under. I like Denise Gomes to finish under two and a half here. Um, Listen, the one I know that I know Carolina, I know she's looked great. I know she's looked great of late. Um, spite besides her last outside of her last performance, it was like three or four in a row where she was killing it. I was excited for her. I'm actually a fan. I remember when she was considered a huge prospect and then she stumbled a little bit, thought she was getting back on track. And then she had that horrible skid, um, I was really excited to to see her hit the win streak, um, and I was actually bummed when she dropped the the decision to uh, what the fuck was it Jasmine uh, Lucindia or uh, Jasmine Lucindo? Yeah, um, I was bummed when she dropped that decision. But there's one thing that you will always see at the end of a Carolina fight, and that is that she wears a lot of damage. Um, she wears a lot of damage, and she wears that damage because she gets hit. Uh, she is very, very hittable. They don't give us the negative stats, the 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 bad stats. You can see most strikes ever landed in the UFC, but they don't advertise most strikes absorbed in the UFC. Um, I would have to believe that minute for minute, she, she is... Uh, got to be a female that has one of the highest strikes absorbed total would be my uh be my guess I, I, I she she just gets hit a lot um so anyways with that at hand i think denise gomes is very strong i think that she's a very good striker um i think she can clip carolina and i think she can hit her a few times um and i just wouldn't be surprised if she can actually finish her uh how old is carolina i know she's getting up there in age and that's not going to help her at all either uh sorry that i'm stalling to click that because i really do want to know where her age is she was born in 85 so she's like 39 years old yeah i'm taking denise gomes under two and a half uh if I can same Gabe parlay and I'm probably putting the KO in it and seeing if I can get plus money on Denise Gomes. Trace, what are you playing? Yeah, man, I, I like Denise, Denise Gomes in this fight. Uh, Carolina, like you said, Carolina's up there. She's, I think she's close to 38, if not older. Um, durable throughout her, most of her career has been then able to like get out of tough situations whenever she gets hurt. Uh, for the most part, but and I don't know. I think Denise, Denise comes out there and puts it on her pretty pretty quickly in this fight, whether it's uh, a knockout or if it's a, uh, her knocking her down and, and end up getting a submission. I do, I do think she ends up getting it done in the first round. Uh, so, yeah, I will be on Denise Gomes round one, round two, probably KO, and probably round one, two, submission props on FanDuel. And uh, she's definitely going to make it into my lineups on, on, Fan, on DraftKings for uh, DFS. Bro, plus 240 for the under, no side. Under two and a half. That's crazy to me. I, man, maybe, I don't know. Maybe maybe her chin is better than I think it is. Uh, oh, but if, if, if the uh, if the Gomez by decision 
if the the the, the points of prop is crazy, like. Four or five hundred or better, dude. I'm gonna be all over that. Like, because why not? If everybody's better there to finish, she's probably gonna win by decision, right? So uh, I would probably play it both ways, depending on how good of a line I get on the decision prop. That's very fair. That's very fair. Um, you're 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 gonna fare better than you will playing her money line at minus five hundred. Either way, that's for damn sure. Oh, Trace, you will not be playing Denise Gomes by a decision. I'm telling you that. You will not play. Is it minus? Minus 150, my man. Oh, that's gross. You might as well hit Denise Gomes by KO at plus 275. Oh, every day. I'll be taking that. Yeah, I thought I thought, I thought it might be the sharp take. I figured people might just assume that she'll get they'll, she'll get Kobo Cabbage out, and then we see a, a slow plotter where she can't get damage done, and that might be what happens here. She might be trying to over over extend or over uh, throw everything into one punch and overextend it or tele, telegraph her punches, and we see Kobo Cabbage counter. But I think it's more likely that Gomez wins the wins the fight inside the distance. Yeah, me too. Uh, Mike, what are you playing? Yeah, I kind of just hit it right on point. Uh, that's how I see it. I don't see Carolina been, being able to take Denise Gomes down at all. So with this fight playing on the feet, I think the ground that um, how fast she covers the distance, the length she throws her right hand, I think she's – and you're right. Carolina is very hittable. She doesn't really move her head. And Denise Gomes has the better movement. So I think this is going to be Denise Gomes. And I I can't disagree with the finish. I think that that's more than likely what's going to happen. Um, Man, starting to worry. Starting to worry. All the sharps on the finish, man. When the over is... Uh... When the over is at such a shit line... Um... Man, starting to make me worry. Maybe I'm not as sharp as I think I am. Uh, Ozzy, you got any plays here? Yeah, I'm in agreement. I mean, Gomez, she she just hits different, man. She hits like a man. Um, I, I really like her in this spot. Carolina's old. She's, you know, I don't know if she had a baby or she's been talking about having a baby or something like that. Um, but, yeah, I'm, I'm willing to just <laughs> assume her career's over. She, she had a good run, you know, she... Fought some good girls, but it, it's over now. This young girl is going to come in here and probably mop her up, like you're saying. It's probably uh, a KO. It's probably early. Um, yeah, I don't mind chucking her in a money line, um, just a money line in a parlay, because, I mean, th there's definitely a chance this does go the distance, and I, unless I'm getting a real good number on the KO, uh, yeah, I, I might I might just play a money line. It's something just to chuck in um, as, as, you know, a, a really confident, really confident pick, to be honest. Uh, listen, have a great show, fellas. Um, I might be popping in and out a little bit here and there, but um, I'm meant to be working, so I better get something done now. <laughs> have a good one, fellas. Appreciate you hopping in, Ozzy. We'll talk to you soon, man. Uh, all right. Uh, Usman, other than uh, playing Denise Gomes uh, by finish, you got any plays here? Uh, I'll just say that uh, this is the first one. This is the official first one of the trend going on uh, this weekend. This is the GM3. Kavokavich is uh, she's a Gerald Mirchard the third, and uh, I do think she has a great chin. But at the age and everything, the damage that she takes, it it's got it's got to come right. It's got it's got to break eventually. Um, I like the under. I like the under. I feel like this uh, card in general is going to be a bunch of fucking landmines if, you, uh, if you're if you just going to be taking easy chalk and shit and you would expect Kovalkiewicz to go the distance and hit the over. So, uh, you know what I'm doing? Fading it. Yeah. Um, I ain't mad at you for it, bro. I ain't mad at you at it for all. Mad at you for it at all. Um, all right, let's move on. Next, uh, next up is Mansur Abdul Malik versus Dusko uh, Todorovic. If I say that correctly, I think I nailed that one. Uh, Mansur is minus three seventy. Um, Dusko plus two seventy five. 
32 books, five days. The over one and a half is set at plus 130, minus 160 to fade it. Um, yeah, this seems this seems pretty straightforward to me. Uh, Mansers undefeated. We've seen him come in on uh, Dana White's contender series, get a knockout. Um, I will not use the term layup, but I will say that the UFC has given this guy a fight that I believe highly favors him. Um, yeah. Either way, I think fight to go the distance, no, is a good play. Um, and I think fade does go. Trace, what are you doing here? Well, I guess Trace don't want to talk to me. Mike, what are you playing here? Okay, so um, I have uh, Malik winning mainly because of the wrestling. The dude's just freakishly strong and talented, a very talented wrestler. Um, the only problem I have is that Dusko is ac actually wrestles too. And Dusko is a big dude. Like, I think everyone's is recency bias when you see Malik just destroy some guy and you see how big he is. But you forget Dusko is just as big as him. And he is the better striker. So I have Malik winning. I think the wrestling will get it done. But if he stands with Dusko a little too long, Dusko will knock him out. So I would actually probably sprinkle a little on the Dusko knockout. Other than that, I have Malik winning, but I'm not going to bet on him. This is his first fight in the UFC, and he's actually getting a, a, a solid uh, a solid matchup. So I, I'd rather just see how he compete, how he performs. I'm on the other side, or, or maybe not on the other side, but not in complete agreement. I think Dusko's chin's pretty much gone, uh, or at least he's shown that he, he doesn't have the ability to take a very good shot. And uh, I think this kid can crack him. So, yeah, I'm, I'm going with the uh, the debutante after the contender series. I feel like that he's one of them guys that they seem like they want to give a push to. And uh, I'm, on the other side, I think this is a feeder fight, whereas Mike thinks this is a, a solid level or a, a solid measuring stick for him. But uh, we'll find out. We'll find out. I, but I do think that uh, I, I have trouble saying his name, actually. Uh, Man, I think sir, that's what the or... UFC wants. That's what the UFC wants it to be. Like, I believe I agree with y'all. Like, that's what this is supposed to be. But yeah, I, I yeah, I agree. Uh, I'm just I, me and you are completely on different sides on this one. It's supposed to be, but I don't think it is. So we uh, but we agree what the intention of the UFC is here. Yeah, yeah, they they want they want to make this dude look good and see how far he can go from here. I agree with that. Um, well, that's fair enough. Usman, what are you playing, bro? I love me some Dusko. Uh, I knew you going to say that shit. I knew it, bro. Hey. Did I come here and tell y'all I love me some Dustin Stolfus last week? I, I did, right? Uh, but no, this is another GM3 moment, man. Uh, setting up a guy up against a dude who uh, who gets a win just to take another loss against somebody that they want. They set this guy up to lose to Jordan Wright. And Jordan Wright got some takedowns. I love me some Dusko. He's a fun fighter. He's really good or really fun to watch. Uh, he's he's not gonna win this one. Uh, I think throwing Mansour in uh, in a in a parlay you'll be you'll be okay. Yeah, I agree with that. Um, wholeheartedly, wholeheartedly. Um, all right, I think that's it. We're gonna move on. Sorry, I was looking up something on a fighter here, boys. I uh, trying to figure something out. Uh, yeah, it was two finish losses. I fucking knew it. All right. Uh, up next, Jillian Robertson versus Luana Panero. I think I, I think I say that name correctly. I'm, I'm pretty close. Um, Luana plus two eighty four. Jillian minus three eighty five. The over two and a half plus one twenty, 
the under two and a half minus 150. Um, man, I wonder what odds I would get if I took Jillian by finish under two and a half and Demond Blackshear by finish under two and a half because I feel like that would be a good two fight parlay. Um, trying to turn on the parlay calculator in these altered colors. It, it works a little fucked up. It irritates me. Um, anyways, that's clearly, that's what I think could happen here. I think she can find the sub. I think, uh, Jillian is levels above what Luana is, is, is ready for right now. I think, uh, Jillian is hitting a stride right now. Um, yeah, I might be showing some favor, some bias here in this one, but I'm definitely, definitely looking to play those two fights, those two fighters to win by, um, to win inside the distance under two and a half. Uh, Trace, what are you playing on this fight, bud? I'm sorry, I missed, I missed the, uh, the announcement. Jillian Roberts versus Luana Pinera. Oh man, I'm, I'm taking I'm taking me some jelly some jelly bean here, buddy. Uh, Jillian Roberts should be able to go out here and get the takedowns and pretty much just smash her until she's able to get the the submission, man. So yeah, give me the uh, Jillian Roberts. I mean, there's just she. I, I know I had a board bet with with Mike on uh, Jillian's last fight, and uh, I actually went against Jillian and I lost. So I, I was on the karate hottie. I thought the stand up was going to be too much and. Uh, yeah, I, I lost. And, uh, yeah, I'm not going to do that again, man. Jilly Bean's my girl. I th I do think she's just the, – the wrestling is going to be too much. And the striking is starting to catch up with, with uh, the wrestling somewhat – or the, the ground game somewhat. She, does, she isn't as pedestrian as she used to be on the feet. And, uh, yeah, man, I think this is a, is a clear, clear Jillian fight. Uh, as soon as this fight gets to the ground, it'll be just how long she's able to take a beating before she gives up the neck probably. Give me Jillian by submission. Very nice. Uh, what do you think you get for her plus demand by decision? What's that? I, I said, what do you think you would get for her plus demand both by decision or by uh, submission? That's got to be a slick line. You probably, depending on how you, the, the submission line for Jillian are probably around, probably around plus 300, probably somewhere around there. And then Blackshear would be. Probably similarly, I would say. Yeah, it would probably be a nice little plus 1,200 little parlay. Yeah, I think that's one I like. And I think if I add the under two and a half rounds is what I was saying uh, to each of them just for a little bit of juice, bro. I bet you I can get that plus, plus 14, plus 1,500. Um, yeah, I definitely like, like that play. Mike, what are you playing on this fight, bud? Man, I have it. As a lock, when I broke down this, Jillian Robertson inside the distance. Because I, I am at first, I thought like maybe she won't fuck around. Maybe she'll get fucked up on the feed because I was breaking down Pinheiro first. because I like to break down the dogs and I'm like, oh, she's pretty good. She might pull Robertson in. But when yeah. you break down Robertson, Robertson doesn't really fuck around on the feet. She only uses it to set up her wrestling or to bring her opponents in and or just fucking go, goes for it. And when she goes for it, she it's not like she's desperate. She's really fast at her entries and changing the angle and dumping her opponent and establishing control and controlling them. And then top, top transitions. Everything is just so smooth with her. She's going to finish her. It's just a matter of when. And I and I don't think I think under two and a half is a fair price. Or Jillian Robertson inside the distance at minus 150. I mean, how can you not bet that? What do you think? Yeah. You, think Mike, you think around two, Mike? Yeah, around two. I think Luana, Luana's going to be pretty uh, strong in the beginning, and I think she's going to be tired after all the work Robertson puts on her in the first round. So round two, definitely. Yeah, I like, I like late round one, early round two myself as well. I think we're going to lock that baby in for sure. Very nice. Uh, Usman. 
Man, so what the fuck is the UFC doing with Jillian Robertson? Like, she's got 11 wins in the UFC. She has a fun style, fan-friendly. She's got clout with the fans. Um, I feel like nobody hates her. Like, why the fuck are we giving her Luana Pinedo? I know it's going to be an easy win here. Golden a star, I don't bro. like this. I, I, it's taking fucking forever. But she's so young, like, too, though. Let's, let's, you got to factor that in. She's been in the UFC since she was, like, 22. She's still yeah. so young. Let's get the ball rolling a little bit, though. Like Charles Oliveira effect right here, bro. They're going to let her rack up 10-11 in a row. And now, all of a sudden, see? she's a legit competitor. Hot as fuck. Um, you know, I mean, hot as fuck on a win streak. Um, yeah, 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 sure. Uh, you like the red hair. I know you and uh, her and Random Marcos were your favorite female. Bro, fighters. could you imagine rolling with them? Fucking everything red when you're done. That would be the worst, bro. The fucking worst. But um, I, I don't like the sub at the odds. You're actually better taking the decision at these odds. You're getting plus 275 for the sub. I believe it's plus 125. My favorite play here is going to be the KO at plus 550 because 100% she can get the sub. But um, will she fuck us and just take the back and not hook in Dad, that rear naked and just land some fucking good elbows and some fists? I think that's definitely in uh, in the game. I think uh, Robertson's money line is a lock. I think the under is a good play right here. Uh, again, another women's fight where you think the over should be a hit um but it's not going to uh ko jillian and under you know last it's time i did her by submission team. she knocked her opponent out and i cashed at them too if y'all remember right dude that's, that's, i like that call usman actually I, I'm, I might revisit that i mean i look i'll go heavier on inside the distance minus 150 but ko uh we'll leave the submission alone and hey if it happens we cast the, the itd but if we get the itd and the ko at 500 we're rubbing our nipples boys <laughs> bro <laughs> bro what do you think i could get if i took the specific rear naked choke on jilly and on demand i bet you i get plus 3500 on that shit Okay, bro, you're, you're this boy feeding. You're, you're reaching now. Look, look. What we're gonna do is we're just gonna take the under in this fight, the under in the Kovalkiewicz fight, and then we're gonna take the under in the Blackshear fight, and uh, we'll get plus three thousand six hundred or some shit. Yeah, see what I'm saying? Actually, I'm gonna put it up right now. Let's see what we get. Say it out loud when you put it up. Uh, plus 285 for the under on Blackshear. Yep. Uh, plus 240 for the Kovalkiewicz under. And then minus 150 on the under for uh, Jillian Robertson. We're looking at... Man, fucking bet online has been real stupid lately. Well, here. Plus I'm, uh, 2082. Plus 2082. Yeah. Like, Mike, yeah. Mike trying to steal my thunder, this fucking guy. <laughs> Uh, to be fair, I was already typing it all into our website to find out I could get plus two thousand, uh, plus two thousand eighty six on it. Uh, it's good for something over there. That's just the under on all three fights. Get you plus two thousand. Yes, sir. That's a lock, or that, that, that's a that's a fun play right there. That is a good play. That's that's a play. Yeah, uh, that's a good play. I like that play. Ten dollars gets you two hundred. Like. How the fuck you go wrong on that? Um, I like that play quite a bit. Trace, what do you think of that? Something you would play? I'm just curious. You're you're uh you play them big odd shits. Is that something you would play? Shit, I'm out here trying to look, plug it into my books right now to figure out what I can get for it. But my, my books don't have it yet, actually. The unders. Gotcha. gotcha. Um yeah, I like that one. That's a good play. I like that. No, no, you're not getting anything else. Go. Huh? Mike, you're on the mic. Oh. And I feel you. I need to. <laughs> been there, bro. Been there. Up next, Ricky Tercios versus Bernardo Sope. Did I say it right? Sope. Sope. Yeah, Sope. 
Sofe, that's what I thought. Sofe minus three thirteen, minus three one three. Ricky Tercios plus two thirty six, twenty eight books, three days, under two and a half rounds or under two and a half. Get you minus one eighty. I'm sorry, over get you minus one eighty. Under get you plus one fifty. Um, not a fight I'm real hot on. Uh, I like Ricky. Ricky is very, very inconsistent. I know that uh, Bernard came in fairly hot. He had only lost to Vicinius Oliveira, I believe. And I don't have that in front of me, but I'm pretty sure that's who he had lost to before he made it into the UFC and then picked up one or two wins and then hit the UFC. Um, yeah. Picked up two wins, hit the UFC, lost Oliveira. Um, I didn't think very much of him, so I don't know. I I might look at Ricky Tercios here, but I'll be honest, I'm probably skipping this fight altogether. I assume uh, Trace and Mike will give much better takes on this one than I do. Trace, what do you got here, bud? So, y'all remember the, uh, Wiley Coyote and the Roadrunner and that little fight cloud you always had whenever they would tie up and then you would see the Roadrunner run out and it was just Wiley Coyote fighting himself? And that is Ricky yeah. Tercios. He is frantic energy that doesn't do any damage. And, man, I just – talk about a guy that I want – I just want to be good because I enjoyed him on The Ultimate Fighter. But, dude, he is just, just an odd, man. He is – there's just no finish ability. Like, I don't know how he got finishes outside of the UFC. Like, they, they just had to be so bad that he just overwhelmed with frantic, nervous energy. But so, so I'm mostly just fading him. Like, I don't even care who he's fighting. Soul Pie, Soul P, Soul Papilla, give me fucking that guy. I ain't mad at it. Uh, Mike, what are you playing? Over, over, over decision. So Pie, bro. It, it, it's so pie. Like, uh, if I don't know if y'all remember the fight with Vinicius, like he was winning that fight all the way, all the way up until the end of the second round. I think he got caught with like a really good punch while he was on the ground and he just never recovered. He got tired in the third round and then he got caught with that knee. But the dude is good, man. He has really good timing on his counters. He's very patient. When it comes to his counters, he likes to use really good feints and he measured pressure. He doesn't really, he's not reckless. Dude is not reckless and he has really, he, he's got some massive punching power. And he reminds me a lot of, uh, Tercios, um, uh, when he fought Aiman Zahabi. Like, remember when Tercios was just trying to bring out something and Zahabi just wasn't having it. He wasn't biting on any feints. And then he would wait till Tercios was, ha had no choice but to enter. Or when he caught Tercios taking pictures and he had a moment where he can touch him. Sapai is just as quick as that. And he's just as good at not biting on feints and picking his moments. I think Sopai is, is going to dominate this fight, and it's no question, especially on the ground. The dude is a very good wrestler, and we all know Tercio's takedown defense is just not there. Even though he's frantic and he causes you to work, I don't think that's going to do anything to Price because they're both... The price is pretty uh, steep right now for both of them. Any and everybody that's ever wanted to get Ricky Tercios down has gotten him down, so I agree with you, Mike. Usman, what are you playing? Key word uh, that Mike said there was uh, Ricky Tercios is going to make you work, man. And uh, I like the over. And I'll be playing Ricky Tercios by decision. You sound uh, like Clint right now, bro. Bill? I don't. I don't. You can you can say that. Been out here. But it's no, not I true. don't. <laughs> I mean, you can say it, but it's not true. 
Uh, and you can come back uh, next Tuesday and we'll talk about how Ricky, Ricky Tercio's got this boy tired uh, from just rolling around on the floor for the whole first two rounds and uh, stole a split decision and everybody will cry robbery. But uh, that's what we're going with. Ricky Tercio's by decision. Hey, Usman. Usman. Yes, sir. When uh, Ricky Tercio comes over to your house, do you usually have, like, burgers or do you have, like, fish and chips? Does it depend on if so, he's cutting weight? Like, So I buy a Patty Pimblet, uh, uh, what's it called, wig, and then I dye it black. And we just uh, sit, in the, sit in the living room and say, you know what I'm saying? Like, for the next two hours straight. Oh, all right. That makes sense. Uh, I knew you was hanging out with him, though. I knew, he may or I knew may not was. ask where his car's at. <laughs> uh shit. All right. Um, up next is... Oh, shit. Here we go. Gerald Merchard versus Rainier uh, DeRider. DeRider. Um... Fuck, here Usman goes. Here we go. Uh, <laughs> all right, De Ritter. Yeah, whatever, man. I was close, bro. Uh, odds on this boy are I actually don't see odds on this. I'll do it there. I, yeah, I do. I knew I seen him. De Ritter minus 294, Mershard plus 229. The over is set at one and a half rounds. You're getting minus 205. Or plus one sixty five to take the under. Um, here, Usman, tell me why Gerald Mershard is a good play. I'm not on Gerald Mershard, bro. We were on Gerald Mershard sure? in his last. And we were on Gerald Mershard on his last fight. We came in here. We said that boy Edmund was going to gas out. GM three does GM three wins or GM three things. And what does he do? He goes and he gets a win up against a shitbird just so that he can fight somebody the UFC wants to push and take a loss. And then he goes and fights a shitbird, and then he goes and takes a loss. What did he do last fight? He went and he beat a shitbird in a fight he probably shouldn't have won. But we cashed. Here he goes against a double champ from another organization that the UFC stole and the UFC is going to want to push in a fight that's going to be a grapple fest against another good grappler. We will not be betting Joe Mearshard the third. So GMC GM three inside the distance. Nah, nah. Uh, De Ritter in uh, in two. All right, Trace. What are you playing, man? Let me just pull something up real quick and make sure I'm not. We yeah, so most of uh, storm. If you guys can hear that, apologies. So most of the Raiders' wins have come early in fights. He uh, seems to be a, a first round guy, first round finisher, submission guy as well. Ah, man, just from watching the tape, dude, it feels like this might be the one time in Gerald Mearshart's life where he actually has a striking advantage. Um, yeah, I feel like Derrida's yeah, coming I mean, hard and hard and heavy and try to get him out of there quick, man. And I, I think we're going to see GM3 do GM3 things and survive. And then I'm playing the round two or three sub, man. I dropped it into the, the, the team room earlier today. I think we see GM3 survive. And when this guy gasses out, because he's a big fucking dude, man. When he gasses out, and I don't believe, I don't even think his last couple of fights were even in this division. I think he's actually coming down from a heavier heavier division. Um, I'm pulling up something right now. Yeah, his last fight was that light heavyweight. This is that light heavyweight, right? No, this is middleweight. His last fight was yeah. that light heavyweight. The fight before that was that light heavyweight. Yeah, he hasn't had a fight in a light heavyweight in a few years. So this is he's coming down for his de debut. UFC octagon jitters. We see it time and time again. These dudes gas out on, 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 on good, like even when they're not making their UFC debut, just on, um, they're expecting a lot out of this guy, so there's going to be a lot of pressure on him. I think he folds to the pressure. We see it happen all the time. Give me uh, GM3 by, by submission, man. I think we see him survive a, a dangerous first round, 
Maybe even see him do some damage on the feet, man. It's going to be funny seeing him jab up this dude, but uh, I think it's a real possibility. And then uh, lock up that submission late. So give me GM3. Give me the long shot. Give me the dirty, dirty, dirty dude that just holds the, holds the fucking record for submissions in the UFC. Bro, play him with that other parlay for like three bucks. It'll probably return like $250. Oh, I was. Uh, don't think it hasn't crossed my mind. Yeah, like that's a that's a legit one. This is a man. This is a nice card for parlays. Um, I'll probably have a few of them out there. Ozzy, nice to see you back on the mic, bud. Get after it. Yeah, um, GM three. He's been my most profitable fighter. My most profitable uh, fighter I've ever bet on, man. Um, his round threes have just been insane for me, and I can't not bet it again here, again here, man. I know that this Anatoly guy. That he, that he just fought. He's the real deal. Um, but he quit in both those fights. He, he fought him twice. I think he quit both times. Um, I, I can't remember a time where GM3 quit. You know, I don't think he has it in him. Correct me if I'm wrong. But he's had, what, 12 wins in the UFC and 11 of them were submissions. One of them was a TKO. This guy is a finisher. He he goes out there and he tests people. He, he can get his ass beat for 13 minutes and still pull something off in the last two minutes. So, yeah, give me the true and tested veteran, the guy with no quit in him. Um, this is a, probably going to be a stand-up two submission guys standing up. But, um, I mean, GM3, he's just – he's got power too. Like, it's kind of it's kind of strange. He's, he's, he's good everywhere. Um, I might have a bit too much faith in him. But I'm, I'm going to play his money line. I'm going to play his round three. Um, and maybe his round three KO is going to be something crazy like – plus 4,000 or, or something like that. So, yeah, give me give me some GM3. Give it, give me late GM3. And fingers crossed he, he cashes again, man, because this guy, win or lose, is really exciting to watch. And, yeah, what's this other guy's name again? Reiner DeRitter. Reiner, yeah, that's right. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, a lot of first-round submissions. He's fought some really good uh, submission grapplers and grappling fights as well, but... GM3, he's, he's very opportunistic on the ground, you know. And he almost got, this Rhino guy, he almost got uh, guillotined by, um, geez, I don't have my computer in front of me, but he, he almost got guillotined by some guy in one of his last fights, and he ended up winning by submission in that fight. Or TKO, I can't remember. It might have been the one where he actually won by TKO. But um, if GM3 gets you in that position, man, he he might tap you out. He's, he's, uh, yeah, he's a scary guy to be going up against. So, yeah, give me GM3 one more time for the man. Hey, I will always ride the round two or round three for, for GM3 on FanDuel until the wheels fall off, brother. I'm right there with you, Ozzy. What type of line are you guys that. getting on that shit? Just out of curiosity. Bro, I usually get like plus 900 on the round two or three group. It's, it's usually pretty good odds because he's such a big dog in the fight that he, it usually is, it doesn't even matter. It's still just so juicy, man. Like If I can, if I can well, get plus... This guy being a big submission guy like he is, I'm probably going to get some fucking crazy-ass odds on, on the submission. So, uh, yeah. Mike, what you on this fight, brother? All right. Well, before I get into that, GM3 in round two is plus 12, plus uh, 1,600 in round three. If you do a submission, uh, round two is plus 1,800, and uh, round three is plus 2,200. But um, when I broke down the fight just, with just play the rounds, you reckon, Mike? Yeah, play the rounds because not when worth I, that extra couple of bucks. <laughs> take it, yeah. When you uh, when I broke when I saw the Ritter, I just wanted to see what was so special about him, and um, I don't see it. He seems very one dimensional, and if he can't get the takedowns, and the person survives what he has to throw, he seems pretty lost and. With Gerald Mearshart's uh, striking defense that he's been showing since he fought Bruno Silva, I don't think uh, De Ritter is going to be able to touch this man. And I believe Gerald Mearshart is going to be the more tricky grappler. Now, De Ritter is big, and I am afraid that when De Ritter goes for the takedown, GM3 is going to let him because he doesn't always defend takedowns. And if he lets him on top, then I believe DeRitter's going to submit him. But outside of that, I just don't see how he's going to win this fight. I feel like he's going to gas, and Mirashar's going to be able to submit him 
more than likely like late round two or three. Speaking my language, I love it whenever you tell me a guy has a certain amount of time to get a fight finished and he's fighting a guy that's maybe not as decorated, but another legit or just as good in the in the department that he's in. Uh, it's always it's always in the favor of the guy that has has the better cardio. Then, I mean, unless they're just completely outclassed in that one depart one department. So yeah, man, I, I don't see how. I mean, I see how he does because GM three. There's a reason why he's not a champion or like in in the rankings up there. But I just feel like this is a a smash play for GM three. Yeah, and like he he fought some good strikers. Remember, uh, Mahmoud Muradov, like he he outstruck him and. Club and stuff, man. I, I see. That's what I see. This is happening. I feel like he's gonna hurt him on the feet, and when he drops him, he's just gonna grab that neck and not let go. Well, props were props are due to Ozzy. Uh, I like I said, I said earlier, I, I thought he had the striking advantage, but like I wouldn't even think about playing the knockout. But fuck, I, I, for the crazy odds that we'll get on that, I'm definitely gonna sprinkle on it. Uh, did we get everybody on this fight? Or are we good? I, I'm I'm just saying, y'all did see him go five rounds and win a decision over Ang Song, right? No, I'm the only one that yeah, won no. one. All right, no. never mind. Erase that from your memory. Uh, let's move on to the next fight. Um. Cody Garbrandt, Miles Johns, co-main event. Uh, good fight, good fight. Um, Car Cody Garbrandt plus one twenty nine, Miles Johns minus one fifty nine. Um, I man, I actually think that line's a little off. And I, I think if you're, I think that that line is off, and I think Miles Johns should be much closer to a. Quick question: Did we miss a fight? Did we? Did we do the? Uh, hang on, the uh, Simmelsberger Charlie Racky fight. Uh, semi the Jedi versus Chuck Buffalo. No, we didn't do semi the Jedi versus Chuck Buffalo. Um, want to go back and do that one now? Uh, does anybody have a solid, like a strong take on that or strong foot? I feel like Simmons Burgers decide. Uh, he's dude. Just the the level of competition he's fought is just way better. I think he's. Uh, had more the more heavy handed of the two, and I could see him landing a big punch and getting Charlie out of there. But I'm I'm not like super super passionate about either side. I think it's uh, Radke easy money, man. If I'm being honest, uh, yeah, like, yeah I same. think Semi the Jedi is one of the most overrated fighters in the UFC. Uh, he is one of those rare rare cases where his nickname made him popular spite the fact that he is not the highest caliber of ufc fighter uh, uh he had that one like real good like he starts that dude stiff as a board on it with a knockout punch but uh i don't know man i, I feel like he's had a, a tough run let me, let me look at his stuff real quick and uh pass it off to whoever you want mike all right joe uh it doesn't like, go ahead and let mike get after it Oh, wait, wait, wait. Uh, well, put his hand up. He don't never do that shit, Mike. Sorry, you gotta wait. <laughs> Get after it. Yeah, man. And uh, I thought we were on the Cody Garber fight. My bad. I thought we skipped this one. Um, yeah, dude, it's going to be uh, Charles Rackey, man. Uh, Semi is one of my favorite fighters because uh, I feel like I I know this guy. I know him. Uh, I called that beautiful dog money against uh, Jake Matthews, and I feel like I just don't get a semi fight wrong. And uh, yeah, Charles Radke, he's he's a GM three. Charles Radke, is, they said, hey, thanks for taking the Carlos Pratis loss. Uh, we need you to come out here, beat the shit out of uh, 
semi, get a win in the first two rounds uh, so that we can talk you up and then talk up Carlos practice at the end of the uh, at the end of the night. So yeah, it's gonna be a uh, Ratke in rounds one and two. Dang, you know that's crazy. I actually got him by knockout too. It, it it's just like I think his striking is a little is not being looked at too much. Ratke has sneaky little slips, and he's so accurate with his striking. And that left hook is a monster. Simmelsberger doesn't really have a um. He doesn't move his head, and he doesn't have a, a, a defensive guard. His hands are low, so he's just there to be hit all day. And the real, his real weapon is that straight right hand. Now, albeit, it's just as much of a monster as uh, Racky's left hook, but Racky at least has better ha has a defense. So, yeah. Man, y'all do realize all three of the Urbina brothers went through the UFC, got their asses kicked, and never got another contract, right? Like, he ain't fought nobody in the UFC. He fought Blood Diamond, and he fought the youngest Urbina. I think Elijah, I'm, I'm not sure. It might, be, it might be a different one. But, uh, yeah, dude, like, the, inside the UFC, he has fought the lowest of the low outside of, uh, outside so of Proties. Well. Outside of Proties, which he was doing well in that Proties fight, but he ended up getting caught. But, uh... Yeah, man. I don't. I don't know. But I, I, like I said, I don't have a strong take on it. There's three other guys in here that are saying Chuck Buffalo or Charlie Radke. D jump on it, guys. I mean, I, I'm being out. I'm outnumbered here, and like I said, I don't have a strong take on it. Look, I'm not gonna take any Urbina hate. You there better is. shut your damn mouth. Those guys live 20 minutes away from me, and Gilbert has had a okay, not so bad not so good career in the ufc so you shut your damn mouth oh yeah man, i wouldn't i wouldn't say i wouldn't say shit to their face they don't kick my ass i mean i still would but i get my ass kicked that's fair Usman said i ain't washing all your draws i wash some of your draws but i ain't washing all of them motherfucker. that's what he just <laughs> said um anyways i think i think that cash is that fight is that correct yeah yeah i just figured we'd touch on it quickly not mad at it. Um, all right, so now we're on to Cody Garbrandt. So I know we're uh, uh, MMA space in here, but did you guys hear the good news? What's that? The Saints finally fired Dennis Allen. We are finally rid of that shitty coach. And I'm just, I did, you know what? It was I was at work yesterday, and that made my entire fucking day. Bro, I'm going to tell you something. The world's a crazy place. Have you seen the Detroit Lions? Hell yeah, bro. I've been telling you they're good for a long time. You should watch football more. No, 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 no. Not allowed to watch football, sir. Not allowed. I'll watch it if there's no MMA and I need to bet. If I turn on the football game, the Lions start losing. I am not a jinx. I am their kryptonite. It doesn't matter. They're winning. Doesn't matter. They'll be losing by the time I shut the game off. And my wife knows it. She says, don't you watch. I'll tell you if they win. I say, yeah, that's fine. Because I don't want to watch this shit anyway. But every time she's like, tune in. They're going to be so good. I'm like, okay. I turn it on. I text her. I'm like, hey, the game's going good. Then the other team scores twice. She's like, fucking shut it off. My wife's super superstitious, bro. She's a bartender she wears like green bay suck shirts that she has made and she wears football shirts every week got like all the lions jerseys whatever man whatever i hope the saints do something special Bro, i was i was about to make a joke and say joe is afraid to watch football because he's a fucking gambler and has an addiction problem and then mike cuts in and says I watch football if I ain't got nothing else to bet on. That's my boy, Mike. That's my boy. Uh, that's what's up right there. That's that's real life. Fuck your fuck your feelings. That's real life. All right. Up next, Cody Garbrandt, Miles Johns, Miles Johns minus one fifty nine. Cody Garbrandt plus one twenty nine. Um, the over two and a half is signed at minus 155. You get plus 125 to go over. 
uh, or to go under. I I think Miles should be a much bigger favorite here, if I'm being completely honest. Um, I think it's decision win, if I'm being 100% honest. Um, yeah, Miles by decision all day. Cody could hurt him, but I just don't see it coming. Trace, what are you playing? Yeah, I think Don's the side, man, but he's just he's he's very low volume. Honestly, both these guys are very low volume volume. Um I think this is gonna be a boring ass fight if I'm being honest. Uh outside of them trading one big shot for one big shot on the feed, I think John Sean should be able to uh win the wrestling exchange if if it comes to that, but I don't know, man. Like, I, I just feel like Cody Garbrandt as a whole is Kind of washed. I think we've we've seen we've seen the best of him, and it's 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 just all downhill from here. Um, Miles John seems to be on on a pretty good tra- trajectory as of right now with the UFC, and I think we they, they, this is more of a build up fight for him than it is a get right spot for Cody Garbrandt or the the start of a a new run. So uh, yeah, give me give me Miles Johns via decision, but I would not be surprised if he at some point lands a big punch and knocks out Cody Garbrandt. Very nice, uh, Mike. What are you playing? Look, man. I, okay, so I know we discussed it in the group chat, and y'all, everything makes sense that Johns is the side, but man, I I don't know. Maybe I'm just looking for something to root to root for Cody Garbrandt, and I think it's just the speed, man. I, when I look at his fights, it doesn't seem like he ever lost it. Like, he just had three horrible performances because he just he was just so reckless in trying to get the knockout that he got knocked out himself. And he seems to have learned from that, and he's fighting a lot better. And he's only had two losses, which were against some of the top ranked and he's not really that old like he there's not a huge difference in age between them two and like we said johns is the is a low volume guy he likes to time his shots he doesn't he's not really careless which is going to be a problem I, i'll admit garbrandt as fast as he is if if miles johns can time him coming in because he's not really setting up at any angles but he does faint a lot so i think if he if he uses a lot more feints and maybe actually tries to go for a takedown not necessarily actually getting it but just get him thinking about different things i think garvin has a real good chance of winning this fight but i think the power of miles johns is going to be a serious problem for him so yeah, man, I guess I'm going back to John's. Yeah, John's is the side. Yeah, I will tell you this. I went through a phase for a couple fights where I thought Cody never lost. And I'm like, nah, man. I said the same shit you were just saying. Um, I know, I'm trying to talk myself into it, but yeah, it's John's, man. It, it's just, you know, I never got that image of him just beating prime Dominic Cruz. Like, he beat Dominic Cruz when Dominic Cruz was, like, unbeatable. And styled on him. Like, just nasty. Yeah, so. but was Dominic Cruz really unbeatable when he beat him? Yeah, he was. He he was whooping everybody. He came back from a long injury and beat TJ Dillshaw. Um, Prime TJ Dillshaw. I yeah, but, deals on steroids. I don't know, man. I guess I have a hard time feeling like um, I'm actually going to look. I'm actually going to look. Uh, Bro, I, it I, took me a while to just study his movement. Like Dominic Cruz was like a serious puzzle for people, just because of his movements. And it took me a while to figure it out. Like, oh, it's like he's got this little figure eight thing going on. But yeah. Um, TJ, Old Ash Uriah, 
Yeah, I mean, that was a fucking crazy streak. I just... Man, I felt like his competition actually tapered off at the end there. He did fight Uriah twice. Uh, I mean, 2011 Uriah was, I guess... Prime Uriah. Uh, I felt like I felt like Dominic's competition teetered off a little bit more than it did before Cody beat him. If I'm being fair, so uh, yeah, I'll take back my doubt right there. Any old ways, um, Usman, what are you playing? Uh, this is one of those fights that I just don't like um, from a betting standpoint. The only thing I will push back on Mike for is. Uh, you can't count that Brian Kelleher win just because you know that guy was 87 years old with a broken neck. And did you factor into your tape study that Cody Garbrandt has got a stupid sword tattooed on his eye? Because that's, that is a bad choice, and that that's got to factor in your tape study. So we're going Miles Jones by decision. <laughs> Bro, that tattoo is so <laughs> fucking stupid. <laughs> that it, it's it's up there for one of the stupidest tattoos in UFC history. Fucking midlife crisis is fuck, bro. Uh, like, no, like let's just talk about it. So the damage is. Kind of iconic, you know what I mean? I can't remember who, but who has that ugly tattoo of Johnny Cash on their arm? He he's retired. He's an older fighter. Um, but like, hey, it's it's fucking Johnny Cash, and it's cool. You know what I mean? Whatever. Elvis. Oh, Al- you got a Alan, fucking uh, Alan Belcher. Belcher. It's Elvis. You you got a fucking sword on your eyeball. What in the fuck is that? Like, what? Give me a worse tattoo. The damage on the uh, Darren Oaken's chest. <laughs> no, no, the damage is. Yeah, you're right. And I think that looks how it's supposed to actually. No, it's hard. Yeah, I think it, it's supposed to look ugly. Yeah, you know, like. I didn't even know he had a tattoo in his eye. That's fucking crazy. Bro, it's so stupid. Dude, it's- it's so stupid, it looks fake. Yeah, it's the stupidest fucking thing. Like, now he looks in the mirror every day and remembers he's a fucking warrior. Get the fuck out. <laughs> <laughs> you think you like... Like, do you... You think you like... You remember when people were giving Kevin Lee shit for getting the, the gladiator yes. helmet on the back of his head? This idiot got a sword on the front of that his head, on his eye. Is, is, a, is a helmet on the back of his head? That thing is so... It's supposed unreadable. to be a samurai helmet. Dude, it is so unreadable. I, I've never been able to figure out what the fuck was on the back of his head. It's a samurai helmet. Yeah, that that's a bad tattoo. But the fucking sword is just... You know, it's only comparable to the other stupid sword that was on Brock Lesnar's chest. Bro, listen. Cody Garbrandt steps out of the shower, looks in the mirror, sees the tattoo on his eye, pounds his chest, calls himself the man, and walks out of the bathroom. (laughs) What a fucking moron. Why would you get that tattoo, bro? Like... It gives you no cred. It doesn't. It just doesn't do shit. Whatever. Good for good. As if, as if being a championship level fighter wasn't enough, you have to like stroke your ego and say, "No, I'm real badass. I got a fucking sword tattooed on my eye." Like, what are you doing, man? Yeah. So Cody's going through. So you know, I'm an old street racer, right? legit street racer and there used to be this thing we used to say people be like man what are you doing you know paint jobs or whatever you'd be like listen i want my car to look fast when it's sitting still i want you to look at my car and go damn that motherfucker's fast cody garbrandt is going through this thing where he thought he was the 106-pound Mike Tyson or whatever weight class he fights at. And uh, he was like, you know, Adam Weight, Mike Tyson, that's me. And 
he's not the Adam Wade Mike Tyson. So now he's going to look so scary that you know he's tough when you see him. Uh, yeah, that's the only fucking comparison I have. Cody Garbrandt gets knocked the fuck out. Miles Johns, I've talked myself into it. That's it. Uh, that's it. Miles Johns knocks his ass out. See, Mike did the same thing. Mike did the same thing in this space. Talked himself into betting Miles Johns by knockout. So, uh, a Cole Shelton, I don't know uh, how uh, reputable this is, but he says he's a writer for BJPen.com and uh, Rotowire Sports Kita is uh, from BJPen.com is saying that Cody Garbrandt is out so, of his turn, fight. So turn your mic off. Oh, all right. You can hear that? See, si, senor. Oh, yeah. And now Spinning Backfist has reported that Cody Garbrandt is out of his fight. He probably got stabbed in the eye by that tattoo. <laughs> <laughs> uh, well, we just wasted fucking 15 minutes of breath. Uh, all right. End of the night. Neil Magny, Carlos Prates. Uh, Prates minus 769. Um uh, Plus 516 on Neil Magny. Over one and a half plus 165. Under one and a half minus 205. Uh, and all of your parlays with Carlos Pratis inside the distance. Uh, and all of your parlays with that. See if you can get minus 400 to get. An extra 25% return at the end of your parlay. Hey, Mike, tell me what you're playing in the main event, bud. Okay. Okay, so y'all got to hear me out, man. <laughs> okay, so I I think this is very winnable for Protez, but minus 750 is not justified at all. There's no reason for that. In fact, I'm pretty sure the opening odds weren't even good enough. Um, look, man, this is still Neil Magny. Even in the losing fights, he still implemented his game plan. And this is not – he hasn't fought nobody like Neil Magny before, and he hasn't fought a five-round fight before. Again, the knockout probably gonna could happen. But if it doesn't, Magny is a serious problem for him stylistically. It's because Magny is a push forward kind of guy. He grabs you and it's just clinch work and grinding on you all day. And Protest has shown in his fights that he can be grabbed. He can be taken down too. He's not going to take Neil Magny down. Neil Magny is the bigger guy and longer guy. So I got the over two and a half at plus 185. That's my play. I don't think Protus is going to knock this dude out early. Even though I can clearly see that Protus is capable of winning this fight, minus 750, is n there's n no excuse for that. I'm going to bet no Magni. Because, again, stylistically, Magni can cause some problems if he doesn't get knocked out early. Five round fight is going to be at a very high pace, and we've never seen Carlos Protest fight this level of fight, and he's never been tested like Neil Magny's going to test him. I just don't, I, I don't see it. I don't see how he's going to, how he he should be a minus seven fifty favorite. That's especially it's still Neil Magny, man. Come on, it's Neil Magny. This dude is the gatekeeper, like he's your doorway to the elite. And he has turned back so many people. One just recently. Everyone but thought he was going to lose it. And still finished him. But Mike. Come on. Protus is finishing everybody, bro. This I, dude man, is like. I, called, this dude I knew is he was going to knock out Li Jing Lang, which I felt crazy for even saying that when I, when I broke down the tape. But again, again, man, 
Magni is a different animal. The dude can take a shot. And I the dude this, I said this once before too, bro. He's getting knocked out. His his advantages that he counts on will not be enough. He he's not he doesn't have enough height or enough reach. Go go check the stats. I, I haven't checked them, but I would stand pretty I would stand pretty stout on the fact that he needs six inches, four to six inches of reach. Um and he needs three to four inches of height for those advantages to really shine. That jab that you're talking about, where he can get a step in jab working. Uh, we've broke Magni down real in depth in these spaces more than a couple times. And bro, it's just it's not gonna be there in my opinion against Protus. Protus is gonna push forward. Magni, Magni crumbles under pressure. He crumbles under forward pressure, bro. Um yeah, I just I don't see it, Mike. I think you're wrong. I think you should save your money. Don't I don't tell people how to bet. I'm just having the debate, bro. I think uh I think you should save your money. I think end all parlays with Carlos Protest inside the distance, man. I really No, look, Mike, Mike, you take that money you were gonna put on Neil Magny and you put it on the over one and a half because I, when you first said it, I was like, oh, thank God he's not betting. Maggie. Oh, my boy, my boy's not betting. No, Maggie, he's going with the over. He, he's, a, he's a smart man. Bro, just listen. Just listen to this, bro. Max Giff Griffin, Daniel Rodriguez, Phil Rowe, Mike Malone. Listen to this. Michael Morales, Gary Machado, Gilbert Burns, Shavkat Rachmanov. Which group of those fighters does Carlos Pratis land in? Is Carlos Pratis going to end up as a Max Griffin in the UFC or a Phil Rowe? No, I get exactly what you're saying. Like, there's a clear side. There's a clear level to where Magni wins. I, I'm, honestly, I'm honestly considering who was GM3 before GM3, was it Neil Magny? And I didn't mean for those to rhyme. But was Neil Magny the GM3 before GM3 was the GM3? Because he's he's also a GOAT. He nah, goes out so, there, he takes that loss, and he gets a win, and he takes that loss at the stadium too, and he gets a win. No, bro, you got to realize, Magny hit... Magny had a really long run um a really good run he hit i'm clicking it now uh one two three four five six seven in a row took an l got subbed by damian maya came back got three more then went l win l two more l three wins and then he started to stumble i mean neil actually has a pretty impressive UFC career. Uh, but I will say this, man, you got to remember um, Gilbert Burns subbed his ass in the first last year. Um, and someone else finished his ass quick too. I know they did. I can't, I'm looking now. Shavka and Michael Morales. Yeah, bro. I mean, I don't know. I think this is a Ali oop for Carlos Protest. I'll say this: I, the 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 UFC is throwing him the Ali oop that he needs to get over the hump. And if he misses, if he misses the catch, and he doesn't hit the dunk, uh, Carlos Protest is going to be on a much slower train to the top. And I think that is a very fair take, regardless of what side you're on on this one. Uh, Trace, why don't you speak up on this fight, bud? I mean, I feel like it's pretty straightforward. You know, Magny's going to kill this man. What? No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> no, nah, I feel like Carlos Prates is probably going to walk this dude down and, and probably... I think he's going to hurt him to the body before he hurts him to the head. I think it's going to be a knee to the body, kind of like... The, I'm pretty sure he did that to... Uh, to uh, Charlie Radke as well, but uh, yeah, I think I think he's gonna hit him with a knee in the clinch, and it's gonna come from there, whether it's an elbow or something like that. But I think this fight is gonna be a lot more in the clinch than people think. Um, 
I think he's going to walk him forward and Neil, you know, Neil's going to initiate the, the clinches, and I think he think he's going to have the, the strength advantage in that clinch, and he might, but I just think that the, the explosiveness for process is going to be a problem for him. Uh, the knockout probably round two, but uh, would not be surprised if Magnet makes it to a decision and makes this a tough fight with the crowd. Wait, so you think Process is going to win the clinch? I wouldn't say win the clinch, but I do think he's going to be able to set up the knees and elbows off the brakes and, and hurt Magny. Uh, All right. Well, he usually sets up the knees when they come in. Like He's really good at timing them. All right, I'm giving y'all boys a crazy one right now, and I don't normally do this. I, I did talk gonna... about the, round, uh, the, the submission on round two, round three on Mike Malott, though, so I don't know. We'll see. I might play that again. Let's take the under two and a half in the Cody Stamen fight. Let's take the under one and a half in the Gerald Murchard fight. Sweat, I know, sweat, right? Let's take the under two and a half in the Jillian Robertson fight. Let's take the under two and a half in the Denise Gomes fight. And let's take the under one and a half in the Carlos Protest fight. Plus eighty five thirty two. I said knockout or a submission. I meant knockout. My best. I think oh, I'm that playing like that. Reaching. What round, Trace? Give me a round. What round? Oh no, I'm just saying for the. Uh, I took the, the round two or three knockout for uh, Magni against Malad. I was correcting myself from earlier. I got gotcha, you. I got gotcha. you. I thought you were actually saying something different. What round do you think this fight ends in? Uh, probably round two. I, I think he probably gets a lot. Or a lot. He probably gets. I did hear you say you were betting that. My bad. I did hear you say that. I'm sorry. Oh, no, you're good. Um, man. So the under one and a half is like on your sweat line. I'm not kidding. Um, if you're playing the under in this fight, or the the uh, the over in this fight, rather, you're definitely gonna sweat your fucking nuts out. But every time it's exchange, like Protus is powerful, man. Like he's precise. So we're gonna see it. And Magni's getting, I mean, Magni, yeah, four or five years ago, I would probably be on Magni because the way he was able to uh, string things through the clinch and how strong he was in the clinch, he's not that same person anymore. He, he, he doesn't even clinch as much as he used to, or maybe he just can't anymore. Uh, I mean, but aside from Michael Morales, which is a truly special talent, no one else has finished him that fast via knockout. Yeah, but he also went. Uh, hang on, I haven't pulled up. Let me make sure I'm not talking out my ass before I say it. But I'm pretty sure. Yeah, he went in life and death with Max Griffin, and I'm pretty sure if I remember, I thought Max Griffin won that fight in a split decision, and that's not good. No, nah, he. I think Magny won that. Magny won that split decision, but yeah, he got dropped. He got he 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 was getting touched up, but he he still pressed. And yeah, if anything, he like got more aggressive in the third split third split round. Ticket. Yeah, I thought I would too. Uh, that that was like a serious misread. Magni really pushed it on, put it on him on that fight. Well, Phil Rowe fought his fight. To be fair, like he cost himself that fight. Very true. Very true. Uh, I also think that um, giving a protest the five rounds, man, uh, is going to give him time to slow down and find that knockout, even if it does come in the later uh, rounds. We saw Gary destroy those fucking legs, and he could have gotten that finish if he just pressed a little bit more on uh, on Neil. I, li I like the over one and a half, and I like the uh, protest KO. We'll probably look at KO two, three, or... Something like that. Man, I'm taking some unders. Yo, yo, I don't think oh. this being a five round fight for that for that matter, I know I'll be, I'll be taking a process KO round two, three, four on FanDuel. Uh, that's Very nice, boys. Like you, 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 you gotta like the over. 
if Magni wants to win or if Magni wants to survive. You better fucking hold on to this guy. You better clinch. You better. That's what is. That's his man. style, you, though. That's what I'm saying. His style. I know, can and I don't think so he's gonna problems. win. But he better. But he better do that to fucking get the over. Look, he better try to win. If this he was a three round fight, stay on the outside and use his length. If this was a three round fight, I say it's protest hands down. But this is five rounds, and this is gonna be Magni fighting at his pace. Unless he gets knocked out clean, Magni's going to keep going forward. He's going to grab him, and he's going to wear on him. With that most annoying key, uh, boom, 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 every time he throws a punch, man. <laughs> Make that weird head, boom, boom, boom. I'm just saying, this feels like, like, I don't, it, it's mainly the odds for me. Like, I just don't think those odds are justified. Oh, no, I, I 100% agree with you. I, I would love to know what a, like I said, a, 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 a decision prop for him on a five round fight, dude, that'd be juicy. Especially at plus 700 or whatever it is, minus plus 400. Yeah, I, I don't see Magni finishing him. I just see him wearing on him. That's, that's it. Because, again, every fight has shown, he every fight, besides, uh, I think, I don't, I'm not sure if uh, Lee did it, but. Every fight before that, he was he was grabbed. Uh, contender series, he was taken down. And I I I don't see how Magni doesn't do it. I think he can just run, charge him, and just grab him, and it's a problem. Kind of sketch when you're looking at the uh, decision uh, line for both of them. Uh, books didn't really want to give you anything on either fighter just in case we went into the four and fives. It's plus 800 for both. Damn, just for decision? Yeah, it ain't going the distance, man. Magni gonna have to finish his ass. I mean, you figure you figure even if Pradas goes ham for few rounds, Neil's going to have to find a finish late if he's got any gas, man. There's just... Them guys going well, to the decision is nuts. Five that's rounds, not Pratis bro. style. Pratis is very methodical. Look, I'll give that to him. Dude's a fucking... He's like a surgeon in there, man. He just knows how to just slice through his opponents because he, he makes reads fast and he just knows... Once he makes those reads, you're in trouble. Mike, is he a, is he a fight nerd? Yeah, I, hey man, yes. I know I'm going against my rule. Don't bet against the fighting nerds, but god damn it, this is the numbers are telling me to do it. I mean, I'm not going to tell you to not make your bet because the numbers are how money's are money is made for everybody. So like, I'm not going to say that at all. I'm just going to say, bro, you've made some really sharp calls through the night, and I think you should play a lot of those. I think if you're light on whether or not you're going to play every read you have, maybe this is the one to go light on. The reward will be big either way, so you don't got to bet it big to hit it big. Like, play it. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. No, play I'm, it I'm, very low. I, I'm, that, that's the plan. It's it's mainly uh, – it's got, the plus one here because, again, I, I can see process winning – I just think Magni is a style that can give him problems. For that, I'm going to just like juice it up a little bit, add a few legs to it, and put a little bit of money on it. That's it. I'm not I'm not going to just bet on it straight and have high hopes for it. Hey, Mike, were you taking the over 2.5? Because I just saw it set at 2.5. I thought it was at 1.5 this whole time. No, it's 2.5. I'm taking 2.5. Ooh, uh, look, I'll tell you this, bro. Fuck the 2.5 and fuck the Magni bet. If you are going to put anything on Magni, you take whatever that one unit or whatever you were going to put on those and uh, just split it up on the props. Magni by points plus 800, by submission plus 1,000, by KO plus 1,200. If he does gas, if he does have nothing off of his back and fucking... Uh, Magni's gonna find a finish there. You're you're looking pretty damn good. 
Well, yeah, that sounds a lot smarter than what I was going to do. Ah, <laughs> <laughs> uh, shit. Well, I think that's the card, boys. We've been hammering on this card for over two hours. It's a fucking... It's the Apex 100 card, so... Uh, you know, I think we gave it its due diligence. Um, I sincerely think you guys... Uh, are very good betters, and as we move into the YouTube segments, I'm going to try to engineer a more bet-geared only segment that we can do, because um, I really think we would do well. I'd really like to bet, like in a in a race. I don't. I'm not saying I'll beat you guys. I just think it would be fun. Um, Ten dollar bets, two a week. First one to a thousand bucks wins or something. You know, like nothing crazy, just everybody's got to make two bets and 10 bucks, whatever it is on them. Um, something, something real simple, some real simple rules. I think it would be nice to get something out there. Um, but I do enjoy breaking these cards down. Uh, I do enjoy breaking these cards down with you guys. I thank everybody for making it tonight. You guys got any topics you want to hit? Usman. Did you do fight announcements today? They didn't come up in the in the chat, so I don't know if you did them. So I can look them up. I know we got some fun ones, um, but I did not. I got my boss rolling with me, so uh, I got you. no texting and driving. You know what I mean? Uh, yeah, let me let me let me pull them up, bro. We got some. Oh, while I pull them up, we'll talk about. Uh, you know, I think Tracy Cortez beats Miranda Maverick, but uh, she just pulled out of their fight and uh, starting to get a little sketch, eh? Did she pull out? Cortez yeah, or Maverick? Fight. Cortez pulled out. Oh. I wonder. Right, if... It seems like she's going to be like, um, what's that other girl that keeps getting injured? That Not should be Suarez. Suarez. Oh, my God, man. Because I think I think Tracy has a lot of room to grow, she, and I think if if she really worked on her skills, like it seems like she does do in between her fights, she she could she could truly make a run. I feel like I'm the only person who doesn't see that in Tracy Cortez. I see Trace Tracy Cortez. Uh, I feel like she's going to hit a certain level. And that's going to be it. We're not going to see her get a bunch of wins or W's anymore. Um, I Man, we see it happen to a lot of female fighters. You know, they look really good in the bottom, in the unranked. And when they hit the top 10, they just don't do super well. Uh, I'm not hating on Tracy Cortez, but I just feel like her potential is very, very limited at this point. But. Shit, I don't coach MMA. I don't sign fighters. So, Man, what the fuck do I know? In the block. What's that? It's always going to be Jenny from the block. Oh, that's for sure. Uh, that's for sure. Usman, you got any announcements up? Uh, uh, yeah, so uh, UFC 311, January 18th, Eileen Perez is getting her official step up into the rankings when she fights Carol Rosa. Um, Ooh, that, damn, that is a banger. I'm high on Carol Rosa, man. She does everything. Yeah, that's a good fight. Uh, I don't know who I would... I don't. Perez is the side, though. Let, let's just yeah, that's what I was going to say, bro. I didn't want to start a debate with you because you were like, oh, I'm high on her. But I was like, bro, I don't I don't think you're on the right side there. No, no, I, I, I understand. Again, I, okay. I, I'm a sports better before I'm a fan. I, I, I'm so high on Carol Rosa, but Perez is definitely the side on that one. Okay, yeah, I was like, I don't want to fucking start a debate with him. I was just after him on the main event, bro. Like, fuck. <laughs> oh, I'm glad you said it before I did, bro. Uh, I'm glad you said it before me. What you got? What else you got, Usman? 
Yeah, Rosa's at least going to give her a, a fun fight. She's not just going to lay down for it. Um, on the same card, UFC 311, January 18th, we're looking at Zachary Reese versus Cedricus Dumas. Holy shit, Sean. <laughs> Listen. Hey, man, hey, I will say Dumas really showed us what he should have been showing us in his last fight is that if he – Yes, he did. He will stand his ground and fight you if he has to. Yes, he but did. But Zachary yes, Reese is did. probably going to knock him out. Yeah, but listen. <laughs> I was going to say, he's going to have to stand his ground. He's going to have to stand that fucking you guys, ground. Uh, you guys go to a carnival or like um, uh, Dave and Buster's? I've been there. You know that really fun game where you can take the coins and you drop them in the slot and then they roll down the back and then they fall down on the silver tray? And the deal's going forwards and backwards, and all the coins are piling up in these huge piles. And maybe they'll fall over the edge, and you'll get a whole bunch of them. But maybe they'll just hang out over the edge, and you'll never get any of them. Um, that is this fight. That is this fight. <laughs> <laughs> I was wondering where you were going with this. <laughs> that is this fight. I just I just want to say that. It doesn't matter what well, side don't... you bet on. It doesn't matter, bro. That is this fight. That is this fucking fight. Well, well, don't worry because the coins will be falling. We have a big jackpot coming soon. Uh, UFC Tampa, December 14th. Michael Johnson versus Atman Azaitar. I will be all over Michael Johnson, KO 1 and 2. I was just about to say that, bro. Yeah, then just bet the under, bro. Someone's getting knocked out. Yeah, why would you take Azaitar? Or why wouldn't you take Azaitar? Because he's absolute garbage and has a glass chin. Well, he got knocked out by Matt Favola. Favola can crack. And I will say he he did, like, you could tell before that, even before that knockout happened, he just was not there. But I, the he, speed he advantage. He don't like to get hit. He don't like to get hit. I told everybody here, you need to put your mother's house and her grandmother's gravestone on Francisco Prado KO. Oh, I and forgot that about was, the Prado fight. Okay, never mind. Michael Johnson that, out of the way. Dump your money, bro. Right there. All the, the way. That, that Prado fight, mm, beautiful. Chef's kiss. Yeah, Michael Johnson's probably going to knock him out. He's way faster, too. Fuck the speed advantage. Wait, wait, wait. Odom in his ITAR or Abu is ITAR? No, it's odd, man. No, Abu's the older brother. And he's a middleweight, right? Yeah. And you know what? These guys aren't training good, man. They're fucking. Have y'all heard the story behind these guys? Aren't they like mafia or some shit? So they got kicked out of Germany for uh, gang rape, um, but I think that was the oldest brother. Uh, this this Ottman guy has a pretty clean record. Oh, uh, I do know who these have, fucking pricks are. I know what you're talking. They about. have forced themselves into the Moroccan king or president or whatever, and they are basically their bodyguard slash fucking Moroccan presidents now. It, it's it's a really weird trip of a story. Go look into it if you want. Yeah, they're... Uh, i seen some of that shit. I know exactly what you're talking about. Uh, that was a while back, though, right? That was... we. Yeah, yeah, they've been living like Yeah, this. I did a record on that, like, December 2022. We didn't four... have anything to talk about or some shit, I think. like We talked about that a long time ago. Yeah, so they're living very cushy lifestyles, uh, and 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 he can tell you we can see it by Ottman saying, "Oh man, guy punches hard. I don't want this shit." Uh, <laughs> Anyways, Link side is like Connor, so imagine them. Yeah, what is? Hey, real quick, is so is the lawsuit on Connor? Is that a lawsuit or an investigation? He went to court for today. So, 
<laughs> yeah, so but from like what I understand, losses, from what I understand is I in Ireland, details cannot come out of the court until it is finished or some shit like that. So it has been a personal lawsuit that's been going on and it seems like it's finally over so now that we're getting uh, legit details and reports about it. Um, so I'm assuming this uh, lady won some some money, and Connor she's probably facing some real bad shit. Like I would assume jail time coming soon. I don't think so. I think that. So when this came out, I did a little digging into it, and I was doing. Um, when the story first hit, when she first accused him and everything, this happened at that basketball game. Um, I think that the problem that she is going to have is that they were filmed going in and coming out. And I understand we can make jokes about two pump chump or whatever, right? But um, there was a very, very short time lapse if what I could account for was correct. And I think that that is going to cause a huge problem for her in court. Um, she tells a pretty elaborate story. And maybe she's telling the truth. Um, I'm not actually saying that I don't believe her. Uh, I'm not saying that I do believe her. I'm just trying to be neutral and saying that she tells a pretty detailed story um, that may or seems to allude to more time than could have elapsed. Um, so I don't know. I just, I think that from what I had looked at and what I had tried to figure out when I wanted to report on it. Um, I'm, I'm pretty confident that that may be, be an issue for her that. Yeah. I just think that could be an issue for her. And we'll dead it right here. But my only pushback will be, I don't even know if it's that girl. It is. There's it been is. multiple well, accusations. It is that girl. It is that girl. Because I read the thing you said, and those were her exact accusations. Those were her exact accusations mm -hmm. that that happened in the bathroom. So um, I'm pretty confident that that's her. And I don't think it's a criminal lawsuit. Uh, the word is slipping my mind. I'm embarrassed. But uh, I believe it is the other type of lawsuit where you're just pursuing someone for personal negligence. What is it, civil? Civil, yeah. I believe it's a civil lawsuit. Yeah. Uh, Connor doesn't have many fans left, but for the ones that do, I hope they hope that uh, it's not true. Uh, Daniel Marcos is no longer fighting Saeed Nurmagomedov. He is now fighting... <laughs> absolute anger guys UFC Tampa is going to be nice to end off the year uh, Adrian Yanez nice damn that's, a, damn that's an even better matchup it's going to be a striker's delight man that's going to be a fun Fuck fight yeah. you know I hope Adrian never strikes his way out of the UFC what a lot of fun fights could hit a bad skin and uh and we lose him. I like him quite a bit. I hope that he, uh, I hope he has a cowboy like career. You better hope they match him up very well because he, he is mainly hands, all hands. Yeah. And you know what I'm saying, right? Like if, if it goes okay for him or well for him, he could have a cowboy like career. I really think he is a cowboy Cerrone like career in the making. But, if he hits a bad skid before they love him that much, uh, man, I'd really hate to see Adrian not to not get to grow old fighting. Uh, he's a guy I want to see. Cowboy Cerrone, Jim Miller. Uh, I I'd like to see Adrian have a career like that. So um, I hope he can get a W. I hope he can rack some Ws up because it seems like he takes fights that are maybe not 
favorable for him more often than he should. Yo, Mike, if you're trying to if you're still trying to get the best bang for your buck, Kamala is twenty nine to one right now. Holy shit, is she really? Yep. So Cal, she has her at a fourteen point three percent chance of winning right now. Oh shit, six percent. Ninety four percent chance that he wins when I refreshed. Well, you know, uh, you'll probably be getting twenty nine to one odds on uh, this next fight, considering how the fan base uh, uh, reacts to this guy. Uh, Peyton Talbot is fighting Howney Barcelos at UFC 311 January 18th. Yeah, I've seen that one. I've seen that one. That's a, that's a fun Who's fight. Who's fighting Barcelos? Peyton Talbot. Oh, no. I don't want to see this happen to Barcelos. Put my boy Barcelos. Yeah, and we're not gonna get a good line on Talbot. Hey, Talbot is it's gonna be minus nine, bro. Be so disrespectful, but it's still not gonna be bettable. I know. It's, oh my god, it's a sad day. I don't want to see Barcelos, but I like this. Probably minus four hundred against him. Good night. So back to uh, UFC Tampa, like I said, last card of the year and uh, the last fight of the year will be uh, will be some fun. We'll see what happens when Ian Machado Gary fights Joaquin Buckley. That's your main event, too. That's a fun ass fight. And anybody that hates on that fight can kiss ass. That is going to be a good fight and it's going to be a good build up. It's going to be good lead up. That is going to be fun for the end of the year. I don't give a shit what anybody says. Because I've already legitimately seen a lot of people hating on that fucking fight. And I don't get it. I don't two, get two it. Counter fighters, two counter strikers usually don't end up well in a, in a striking fight. Yeah, but Buckley's, Buckley's going to make him fight. Yeah, that's, that's exactly how I feel, bro. Buckley is not willing to... Buckley knows it's got to be a banger. He knows getting knocked out by Ian Gary ain't going to kill his career. But knocking his ass out is going to skyrocket him. He's going to go in there and push it, man. I really believe that. I believe that. Yeah, but I think that's just going to lead to uh, him getting knocked out. I don't know, man. I, I'm still going to be on Ian Gary decision right there. We're going all five rounds. Hey. What I will hey, say man. is... Ian Gary's decide. Yeah, let's agree to that. They want Ian Gary so bad, bro. And I will just say this. Walking Buckley is the type of dude to show up and fuck their whole plans up. I'm just saying. Not to... To go to the top, not to go to the top, but just show up and fuck it all up for them. He is a disruptor, that's for sure. So, uh, maybe us Derek Lewis betters uh, got bailed out last weekend because the UFC obviously wants to push Janata Denise. Uh, he has been rescheduled to not fight Derek Lewis, but now fight Marcin Tybura next weekend, November three oh nine or November sixteenth, UFC three oh nine. I'm interested to see what y'all think about this fight. I, I really mean, need. Oh, sorry. This is horrible. No, like huh? Tibber is going to. Like this is a horrible matchup for him. No, Tibber's gonna take his ass down. Wait, no? but wait. Was Ty, Tybura? Wait. Go ahead. Was, was Tybura in camp? That's important to know. Dude isn't Boy, always in the best minute. shape. Yeah, dude isn't always in the best shape. I'm not fucking around. Dude's not always in the best shape. So it's going to be really important, in my opinion, to know if he was already training for a fight or if he's coming off the couch. 
because when, is he, off the when cop, does he never showed up though? Like, he, it seems like every fight he's been, he's been in, unless he gets knocked out. I mean, not this last fight. <laughs> Sergey Spivak kind of hey. put it on his ass. First off, Spivak. no, 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 no. Uh, he got caught. That's it. He got caught. He got lazy. Let's say that. He got lazy. And Spivak was very fast with that arm bar. So that was his fault. I agree. <clears throat> so let's just erase that from our memories and go on our memories on the past fights. What the fuck Man, kind of uh, logic is that? <laughs> <laughs> Uh, so from looking at it, it does not look like he had anything scheduled. His last fight was August 10th. I mean, he should be healthy and in training, but nothing officially scheduled for this. It's not like, oh, Tybura had his, his opponent fall out and we'll just move Janata till next week. Uh, he, he, Tabura is just coming in. Yeah. Look, I will say this. Striking wise, Tabura is at a disadvantage. Jonata can really light him up. It's just a matter of if he's able to implement grappling or not. I think gra- if he's able to grapple him, it's fucking Tabura all day. But stri- if he tries to strike with him, the knees will knock him out. Fair enough. Uh, fair enough. What else you got, Usman? Uh, Banger City, Banger Central, UFC 310, December 7th. Nate the Train Landwehr versus Du Ho Choi. Uh, somebody's dying, and it's probably the Asian. Yeah, I have to agree. You know how we feel about Nate the Train around here. Man, man, he fucking killed my parlay last time, man. Damn. You should have known better, bro. Date the train. Date the train. Date the train. You should have known better, bro. Man, that's Jamal Emmers, though, man. Jamal's like the real Daryl. He just ran through him. Bro, date the train. Don't get no fucks about Jamal Emmers. What you mean, bro? Honestly, look, that's a rule. That's a rule that goes up on the board. If you're not betting on Nate the Train, don't bet on the fight because this fucker will find a, re- a way to fuck over your bet. Yeah, bro. Uh, in the words of himself, if I ain't losing, I'm probably winning. Bro, there's listen, I'm not being funny or being a know-it-all. I'm not superior. But, bro, he is definitely on the list of guys you just don't bet against. You don't have to bet on him. But you just don't bet against you know you know who else you don't bet against Darren Elkins same type of guy bro you don't bet against them guys at this point in their career nah man just no you if we see the change if we see the change in them okay that's different but at this point bro you're either betting on them or just not betting their fights. But what do we bet when Darren Elkins fights Nate the Train? Draw yeah I like draw over. Uh... Over, yeah, over. I'm, I'm betting the splitty. Hundred percent taking the split if they fight, bro. So no location announced, but we do have a date, February twenty second. Uh, Ketlin Vieira is fighting Macy Shiazo. Oh, who fucking cares? Oh, that's fine. That's a good that's fight, a though. Fight. Oh my god, now we gotta talk about Macy Shazan. I hate fucking Macy Shazan. Well, you know what? It's the last fucking announcement of the night, so sorry. So just shit on her for me then. Tell me why she's gonna lose. Tell me that she fucking sucks. Uh, oh man, I like both of these girls. <laughs> uh, I'm just giving you a hard time, man. Uh shit. Well... I think that's it. It's pretty late here. Uh, I got up too fucking early today. And it's, uh, I got to do it again tomorrow, man. Uh, fuck me. Whatever. Um, you boys got any topics you want to get off before we jump out of here? 
Well, since it's all hands in here, I guess we'll get into these hot topics. What do you got? Who's no, I'm fucking around. Uh, all right. It's three hours. It was a good space. Uh, yeah, I don't know. We, I, I think I already started to close it out earlier and then remembered that we had fight announcements because I was all ahead of myself. And then uh, here I am again. So CapMMA.com, YouTube channel. <laughs> All right, so sorry for butting in while you're signing off, but are you guys done going through all the fights on this weekend's card? Yes, sir. <laughs> we, wow. All we right. Just, we just spent three hours doing it and then did all of the announcements. Okay, including the Tracy Cortez one? Yes, sir. Wow. All right, then. Yeah, we killed it today. We're getting out of here. Uh I thank everybody that came in. Uh, I don't know if Dead Picks will get this one on YouTube or not. Uh, we will not have a proper space next week at all. Um, I think we will probably do something because it's the, you know, Mike Tyson, UFC 309. Uh, but we will not have a proper space. It will not be a proper time next week. I'm going to force these guys to help me get some of the production dialed in so that we can get over to YouTube. Um, yep. That's the plan. So that's what I'm going to do. And I'll talk to all you guys in the chats and in the team. Too. Wait, 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 wait. So you're telling us we're not going to break down UFC Macau. What do you mean? You don't want to break down UFC Macau. We're not going to be here next week for Macau? How the hell am I supposed to know who to bet on between Sang Yang Bai Shooter Guy and Shi Nang Shi? <laughs> Holy crap. <laughs> That's not next week. Yeah, next week is John yeah, Jones, bro. Week. Yeah, next week is John Jones. John Jones, Jones is the Tyson. number one pound for pound fighter in the world. Oh, John, I, thought we were, I thought we were going Sang Yang Sai Shuda Bai and Xing Shang Shi. All right. Nah, I well, think what I we should we'll probably see you next week. I think next week, uh, maybe we should try to do something where we kick uh, just bets out for an hour or something. Uh, just talk about the shit we're actually going to bet and do something and then sign off of here and go work on getting shit lined up for YouTube a little bit. Like I've said, man, everybody don't have to get on video. You guys can be on your cell phones. It don't fucking matter. Um, the space will work in the in on the YouTube page. The space will work. And ideally, what? one of us needs to run the space. One of us needs to be in the space. So... The space will run live while we're in YouTube, and we'll be able to let people tune in. So uh, even if you guys aren't ready, I just need some help getting it all set up so we can get switched over. Bro, why the fuck is your mic on me, man? That's a lot of noise. Anyways, I'm out of here, boys. I'll talk to you in the chats. I'm babbling. Have a good night. Thank you, boys.